Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the planning board meeting of March 20th, 2018, 7 p.m. here in Litchfield Town Hall. Would you all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Appointment of alternates this evening. It looks like we have a full board, um, a full board members. So I don't think we're going to need to um, appoint anybody. Um, we have a new member with us tonight, Kate, right? Yeah. Kate Rogers. Um, you um, obviously um, are our new alternate. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Um, and uh, you certainly picked a very good meeting this evening, because <laughs> we never usually have this many people in the room. So, <laughs> um, but um, thank you for your service uh, to the town, and uh, we look forward to having you on as a member. Um, roll call of members present: Michael Croto, chair; Joe Blanchett, uh, clerk; uh, Kimberly Queen, and vice chair; Tyler Perrin, member; Dennis Page, member. Okay. We'll open um, first uh, on this evening um, for uh, non-agenda items, uh, public input. Is there any members of the public uh, who wish to speak, not on the agenda per se, but on anything other than the agenda for this evening? Okay, hearing none, I will close public input. We will start tonight, uh, first off this evening, uh, we have a request for a continuation of um, a site plan. Uh, I don't know if the board has had the opportunity to read uh, the email that was submitted uh, to Jen by uh, Brian uh, Pratt of Fuss and O'Neill on, uh, let's see, March 19, 2018. Um, this was an applicate, uh, uh, application uh, for the owner of a property at, at uh, Colby Litchfield LLC, there was a lot line adjustment, um, taking approximately three acres of tax map 22 lot 96 and adding acreage to 496 Charles Bancroft Highway tax map 20 lot 21. Um, this basically was to create a 36,160 36, square foot building in the Northern Commercial District at 496 Charles Bancroft Highway tax map 20 lot 21 for office space and warehouse for an automated parts distribution facility. Uh, the application included a request for sign at the site. The application was accepted for completeness uh, on March 6, 2018. Uh, the applicant, however, has sent a letter. I will read the letter into the record. Uh, it says, um, hi, Jen. As discussed, we received comments from the New Hampshire Department of Transportation that we won't be able to address before tomorrow's planning board meeting. Uh, they have additional driveway width and geometry concerns. We'd like to request a continuance to the next meeting, which we understand is April 3rd, 2018. And I will keep you posted as we make promises. I would, um, at this time, like to entertain a motion to continue with the uh, hearing um, as to case number 1802 LLASP. Uh, M20, lot 21, and map 22, lot 96. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the request to continue to the uh, date certain April, um, April 13th? Third. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, April 3rd, 2018, signified by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstained. Motion carries one, two, three, five, oh, five, five zero, zero, zero. zero. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that takes care of that. And we will have them on the agenda for April 3rd. The next item of business this evening has to do with an application uh, by Mel's Funway Park LLC for two non residential site plans and one lot line adjustment 
Owners of the properties are Joan M. DeRocher Revocable Trust and Mel's Funway Park, LLC, located at 443-449-450-454 Charles Bancroft Highway, tax map 20, lots 14, 15, 16, and 17. Uh, the applicant is proposing a lot line adjustment between lots 14 and 16. Um, the second application at lot 15 is for a 960 square foot uh, building addition at the Laserplex building, a bumper boat pool, reconfiguration of the access drive and future parking spaces. And finally, a third application at lot 14, 443 Charles Bancroft Highway to construct a 24 foot wide paved driveway and 39 parking spaces for a paintball attraction at that site. We have a number of uh, folks in the audience this evening. Before I begin um, the hearing, I just want to uh, say um, that there will be opportunity for public comment uh, this evening. Um, and hopefully um, the rules will be basically that you will um, come and uh, sit at the table you will announce your name, uh, your address, if applicable, and uh, your business before the board. And if you have any questions for the applicant, certainly the applicant will, I'm, be I'm sure will be happy to answer them. Um, what I would like to do, um, of course, we have the applicants present this evening, Attorney Andy Perlman uh, representing um, the Funway Park, uh, and Keach Nordstrom here, uh, who is doing the site development. Um, I would ask this evening, I think what we're going to do first off is we're going to um, rule on the application for completeness of this project. Um, and what that is, is it's basically a paper exercise. And for those in the audience, this is not um, to decide the merits of the application this evening. This is simply to ensure that all of the requirements are met for site plan application. I'll put that on the record this evening. Um, so we will accept the application for consideration, but it does not approve the application. So you understand. Um, once that is done, um, we will move to um, the uh, site plan. And I would like to do tonight, and if it's okay with Attorney Perlman, I would like to start with 1803B and 1803C, which is the site plan for the paintball park and the bumper boats. Then after that, you can move into the lot line adjustments and the sign and any waivers that you may have, if that's amenable with you folks. That's fine. Okay. All right. Very good. And then once we have um, basically gone through that part of it, I will open it up to public input and uh, members of the public who wish to speak will have an opportunity to address their concerns before the board this evening. Okay. So with that said, on to, well, first of all, let me have um, you introduce yourselves for the board. I should do that, I'm sorry. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, good evening. My name is Andy Perlman, I'm an attorney in Nashua with the Law, law Offices of Prunier and Perlman. Uh, for your applicant, uh, Mel's Funway Park, um, Plex Realty Trust and KBT Realty Trust, um, and I'll explain the ownership uh, breakdown. Uh, with me at the table is Brent Cole of Keach Nordstrom, uh, Project Engineer Engineers. Um, hiding in the audience is Tony Basso, um, also with Keach uh, Nordstrom. Uh, behind me um, are Wayne Caulfield and Michael Accomando of uh, the owners of uh, Mel's Funway Park. And you'll be hearing from uh, Michael with respect to the paintball and the improvements um, to the existing um, Mel's Funway Park site. Um, Mr. Chairman, um, thank you very much. We're happy to um, uh, speak to the uh, paintball site and the uh, Funway Park improvements. Um, right off the bat, I do hope to um, really follow your lead. We have an overview presentation. We want to hear from you. Uh, we want to hear from uh, neighbors uh, and abutters. Uh, we have um, a long list of uh, issues to address uh, from uh, Gen Sis review um, of the um, of the applications, uh, and so our intent is to um, make our initial presentation tonight and come back to you um, with revised plans uh, as we move forward. Um, with, uh, with all aspects uh, to, be, to be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, 
just an overview of the paintball site. Um, again, Michael Accomando is going to uh, speak in detail about how a day of paintball um, works, um, but just to uh, highlight a few things. Um, the paintball site uh, that we have up here, um, it assumes the lot line relocation, um, squaring up lot um, 20-16, uh, which is to the immediate right of that driveway that you see um, there. But we'll, we'll get to the lot line re um, relocation or um, adjustment down the road. Um, but uh, I want folks to know that paintball is seasonal. It's spring to fall. And I want people to know right off the bat, it's daytime only. Um, no lights um, are going to be um, associated with paintball. Paintball is mostly going to be Saturdays and Sundays. That's going to be the, the uh, activity, the busier days. Um, <clears throat> the proposed paintball site is to be open seven days a week, but we really don't expect um, a lot of traffic, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe pick up on Friday. But um, the, uh, the paintball uh, site uh, will have its own um, driveway. Uh, coming off of that driveway, is a, it will be uh, an access easement and it's driveway to the uh, existing yellow house that's out there now. That yellow house is owned by Mel's Funway Park. Um, and um, we have not yet prepared the access easement, but we will for town council's review. Um, you can see that the uh, site leads to um, a parking lot, which stops right in front of the barn uh, that's out there today. Uh, the barn is intended to be uh, modestly renovated uh, as a point of sale um, site and storage for uh, the paintball markers, the paintball themselves, the safety gear, um, and everything that goes with the paintball. Uh, you, che you check in and then you go out to the fields. Um, and, and again, this is, this is my quick overview. Um, the Funway Park site across uh, the road, um, the laser What's the, what was Shorty's, what was the uh, Laserplex building today, um, is owned by the Plex Realty Trust. Again, Michael Accomando and Wayne Caulfield are the owners of that. And on the plan that you see immediately to, to the right um, is lot 20-17. That's owned by the KBT Realty Trust. Again, Michael Accomando and Wayne Caulfield. Um, the, uh, you can see the limited nature of where we're going to be making um, improvements. Uh, there is a, um, a, a bumper, bumper boat pool, um, and then there's a mini Mel's area, the um, driving range, uh, the, we, uh, the tees of the driving range are all coming out, and there's going to be a mini Mel's area with bounce houses and a, a gem dive, um, which we can get into. Um, but I, I do want to turn it over to um, Brent for you to kind of get into more details of the, of the paintball site and the Mills Funway Park improvements and what we're doing there. Have Mike talk and then some additional comments and, and I'll follow your lead on the other two applications. All right. Thank you, uh, Attorney Pullman. Um, okay, so first of all, what I would like to do, uh, members of the board here, um, we have to determine completeness for an application. Uh, that's the very first thing we do in this process. So I am going to turn to our administrative um, assistant, Joan McKibben, um, and ask, um, do we have everything that we need to determine completeness um, for this particular application? Yes, we have fees have been paid into escrow, and abutters have been notified by certified mail. Okay. And waivers as well? I believe so, yes. Okay. And Attorney Perlman, is that correct? Have all the waivers been submitted? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. So with that said, um, at this time, finding that all of the uh, fees have been paid, all the butters um, have been notified of this project, and um, the um, 
uh, professionals have affixed their professional licenses to the application and have been so notified. I would entertain a motion by this board to um, accept the application for completeness. Again, this is not on the merits of the application. This is not an approval of the application. It is acceptance of completeness as to the application present um, at this time. Do I have a motion? Uh, yes. Is this a motion for all the applications, a lot adjustment, and the second? Yes. Year? Well, everything that, yes, everything that is um, for okay. site plan. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to accept these plans for completion. All right. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have any discussion? All those uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstained? Motion passes 5 0 0. <clears throat> okay. The question that I have is there any, uh, this application at this time, is there any regional impact? Um, that would be affected by this application under the statute. Um, does the um, applicant feel that there is any regional impact? Uh, we do not see any regional impact um, to the, uh, and the regional impact is, is uh, we take a step back and look at the roadways, look at the municipal impact to, I guess this would be Londonderry and Manchester, look at the impact of the schools. We don't see any regional impact. And just for the um, people here this evening, um, under the statute, um, which is RSA uh, 36, uh, uh, de uh, 55, definition uh, in a subdivision, development of regional impact means any proposal before a local land use board, which is the determination of such local land use board could reasonably be expected to impact on a neighboring municipality because of factors such as, but not limited to the following, relative size or number of dwelling units as compared with existing stock, proximity to the borders of a neighboring community, transportation networks, anticipated emissions such as light, noise, smoke, odors, or particles, proximity to the aquifers or surface waters which transcend municipal boundaries, shared facilities such as schools and solid waste disposal facilities. Okay. At this time, um, I would ask, does the board have any questions about regional impact? Uh, anything that they would like to address? If, yes, no, okay, all right. Um, if not, then I would entertain a motion um, as to whether this uh, application has regional impact. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that this application does not have regional impact. Okay, I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. Do I have any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstained? Motion carries 5-0-0. Okay. So, oops, I'm sorry. Continue with that. Um, I will just, before we have... Um, Attorney Perlman and his, uh, the applicants continue. Uh, I would just remind people tonight um, the portion of this process um, that we will be considering the application for approval and that the application will require several, hmm? may require uh, hearings, uh, additional hearings um, in order to complete it. Um, you will be given an opportunity tonight to provide uh, at some point any pertinent comments or testimony affecting the topic under discussion. What we will ask now is the applicant to present, well, the applicant has presented an overview of the project, but to go further um, as to the specifics of the site plan, to speak to those uh, issues. And then once we do that and we have, the board has questions and so forth, we will then at that point open it up to public comment and you will be required to um, to come up in an orderly fashion and basically um, state your grievance or um, your concern. 
So with that said, I will uh, turn it over to Attorney Perlman and um, I'm sorry, your name? Brent Cole, Keish Brent Nordstrom. Cole of Keish Nordstrom. Um, and we will start tonight, I would like to start with uh, the site plan as to the paintball park site, if we want to begin that. So. Okay. Okay. Sure. That's fine. Brent Cole from Keech Nordstrom will lead us on that. And then again, um, I'd like to have Michael Accomando kind of get into the detail of what a paintball facility entails from start to finish. Good evening, board. Uh, for the record, my name is Brent Cole with Keech Nordstrom Associates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you make sure you speak up so that everybody in the room so can So for hear. the record, my name is Brent Cole with Keech Nordstrom Associates. Uh, some of my presentation may be a little redundant to, to Andy's. There's not a ton of engineering involved with this paintball course, but I'll give you the, the basis of what we're proposing out here. This, this paintball course is proposed on map 20, lot 14, and post lot line adjustment, the area is around 22 acres. This, this lot is within the Northern Commercial Zoning District, the Aquifer Protection Overlay District, and the Wetland Conservation Overlay District. As you can see, is made up of woodlands, um, some fields, and in the lime green to the plan on my right uh, are the wetlands. Mel's Funway desires to construct a parking lot for a paintball course that utilizes most of this land. A 24-foot paved driveway will come off of Route 3A where lot 14 has frontage. Post lot line adjustment, we will be removing the driveway associated with the single family home on lot 16 and basically relocating it for the driveway for the paintball. This driveway will line up with our new proposed driveway on lot 15 uh, to reduce curb cuts and to prevent conflicting uh, turning movements. The driveway will lead to a back portion of the field where we're proposing a parking lot for the paintball courses. This parking lot is designed, parking lot and driveway is designed to work with the land to minimize disturbance out there. The, the pavement will be treated with a stormwater treatment practice. Yes, I'm sorry. If, um, ma'am. Okay, that's fine. You want to see if you can maybe adjust it so that the folks in the audience have an opportunity to see what it is that you're. You should stand up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you'd like, you can stand up next to it. You guys have a mic. We have a good voice, I guess. You know, <laughs> we got, just we make can sure you're. Mic on the table. Your vo verbal. So as I was saying, the driveway leads off of Charles Bancroft Highway and leads to the back portion of the fields. Um, this, this parking lot is shielded by a tree line here and a tree line here, so it shouldn't be seen from Route 3A. The parking lot is designed to work with the land, as I stated. The, the, all the stormwater is treated through a treatment practice approved by DES uh, that leads to a buffer before entering the, the wetlands. The customers will utilize the, parking, the paintball courses that would be laid over the existing land. They're proposing field courses through here, and there'll be woods courses through the remaining area. Courses will be marked off using a four foot high green snow fence that will, that will be around the field and through the, through the woods. In areas of concern, a 10 foot high netting will be constructed to prevent paintballs from leaving the course. For this application, we have initiated a traffic engineer and we should have a, a traffic study to you relatively shortly. Um, that concludes my presentation regarding the paintball, and I will lead it over to Mike to talk about the operations. Okay, before I do that, does the board have any questions of uh, Mr. Cole? When you say area of concern, what, what is concerning? Like is it so, it, yeah, so areas of concern would be would be that paintballs go astray and could make it potentially to an area like a, in a butter's property or to the highway. Uh, we proposed 10-foot netting around this field, and then we're proposing 10-foot netting in the woods area where there's not something like a steep grade from us up to the, the neighbor. Okay. If I may add to that, um, where... 
uh, lot 14 uh, Botts residential property. Uh, we are going to be having a 75 foot buffer marked by a, a, a short four foot snow fence um, out in the field. Um, and that buffer is intended to be a no cut buffer. We're going to leave it alone. Um, and just to maintain a buffer from, from our neighbors. Okay? Uh, within that buffer, you know, where necessary, um, we are going to have that 10 foot netting. We don't think it'll come into play because of that 75 foot <coughs> buffer, but just in case, we're going to have that 10 foot netting. The netting itself um, is like a shower curtain. It's going to be on lines uh, going from trees. And so off season, uh, or when uh, things aren't busy, then the netting is going to slide over the tree and either wrap around the tree so it's, it's largely hidden, or uh, it comes down. Right. And I think if we may, unless the. And does the board have any more questions on this particular point? Okay. All right, if you want to continue with your. Yeah, sure. Um, so a, a, a day in paintball. Um, I've not done paintball. Some some in the room have, um, but uh, Michael Acomando and Wayne are very familiar with it. They've been studying it. Uh, there are trade shows on exclusively on paintball, if you can believe that. Um, so I'm gonna have Michael come on up and walk us through how this how the operation works. And again, for the folks in the audience, just make sure you're. You speak up vocally. Good evening. Thank you. I'm Michael Accomando. I'm the co-owner of Mel's Funway Park. And I just want to talk to you a little bit about what it's like a day going to paintball. The way it normally works, 10 o'clock in the morning, we would open up. And most people, 90% of the people, end up going online. Because it's not the type of thing where ones or twos or threes or fours come to play. Because we can't do that. You must have a larger crowd to be able to come and enjoy paintball. So you would go online, you would fill out the paperwork, fill out a waiver, submit it online. If the fields are available, then that would be accepted. You would arrive that day, you would go into the sales office. If you did not print out and fill out your waiver online, then what would happen is you'd fill out your waiver there. And at the time you're there, you'd be given your marker, you'd be given your mask and your helmet and your gear, You'd be explained the rules, and then you'd be told, this is your referee for the day, and then that referee would take you outside until either the rest of your group showed up. He would then again explain all the rules to you. He would tell you, this is how it works. Once you enter the field, you must keep your helmet on for the entire day. You must keep your goggles on for the entire day. It's an entire mask like a, like a motorcycle helmet, but it's all connected, so you can't take goggles off without the whole helmet coming off. At that point, he would lead you out. He would then explain to you this fenced in an area. This is where this field is. He would tell you a little bit about the field. He would explain to you the different games that you could do it, where it was either be everybody last man standing or maybe a capture the flag, where you'd have a flag on one side, a flag on the other, and then you'd go back and forth and you'd try to capture the flag and then bring it back to your side of I the just, field. I, I'm sorry, I don't want me to interrupt you guys. I know you folks are standing outside in the hallway, and I don't want you to feel like you're left out of this conversation. If you want to come inside the room, you are certainly allowed to do so. Um, it might be better that if you come in. Um, I just don't want people standing outside. <laughs> I know there's a lot of room, uh, a lot of uh, people here tonight, so the seating may be a little bit difficult. But if they can sit over here, can make any accommodations for people. I, I apologize. I didn't mean to stop you but I saw these people out in the hall and I'm like didn't want to exclude anybody okay please continue I thank you so once you finish that first game the referee is there he gives you a time limit he says all right this game will last 10 minutes begin the game starts if you are hit it's it's kind of like golf it's the honor system where it's up to you to be truthful if you do get struck with a paintball you need to walk off the course. The way it works with a lot of the facilities, we went out to the national show and we visited probably about six to eight facilities to see how everybody else is doing it. What have they done in the past? What works? What doesn't work? How, you know, what type netting do people use? What safety devices do people use? And one of the things that we learned while we were out there, which is a question that everybody has out there, is the paintball velocity is how fast it goes and how far it goes. Um, we will be purchasing four to six devices. They're called a chronograph. This connects to the gun and it reads how fast the paintball comes out of the marker. 
all of the markers, you can gauge them higher or lower if you choose to. We're going to be gauging all of our paintball markers at the lowest gauge, so the paintballs will only be able to shoot 80 to 100 feet max, and that's what will be used at our facility. If somebody chooses to bring in their own marker, that marker will be taken from the person. It will be put into that exact same device. It will be used. It will be tested. And like I said, there will be three to four others around the property as well. Every single game has a referee. Referees will be trained on how to do this in the field as well as at the home base when they first arrive. All of our markers will already be geared, and we will check those daily to make sure that they're where they're supposed to be. Throughout the day, if a referee feels that he thinks that something's not right, he can take that marker and he can test it right there on the spot to make sure that it's still a low velocity and the paintball is not traveling any further than what we would like the paintball to be traveling on. After two games are played, they go back to the front again. They can have water. If they want, they can have a snack because most people play paintball for the day. It's a one set price. You come in and you play. It's not, I go out, I play for an hour and I go home. That's not an offer that we have. It's a, it's a full day package where you just arrive, spend the entire day, and then you leave the facility and you go home. Um, that doesn't mean that somebody might want to come for half a day because they only want to play for three or four hours, but it's still being set up as a full day option and that's all there will be for an option. We are going to set up picnic tables because since it is a full day, you will be allowed to bring lunches, you'll be able to bring snacks. Halfway through, most people do take a break, talk, joke, laugh for a while, talk about their, oh, I got you three times, oh, I got you twice, oh, I did this. So that always takes place throughout it. So while that group is sitting and resting, there might be another group that goes out, but that referee will still remain with that group for the entire time that they are at that facility overwatching that group at that facility. And every time they go out, they do get reread the rules. So it's not just one time and then good luck to you. You start the game, there's a set of rules. You go to another field, the exact same set of rules. Ladies and gentlemen, you keep your helmet on the entire time. It doesn't come off. You're given one warning. If it happens again, you'll be ejected from the facility. You're told what you're supposed to do every single time. So there are no mistakes. If somebody looks like they're doing something they shouldn't, see you later. And most people won't make that mistake because if you go, that means your entire group's going to have to go if that's the driver. And you're paying good money to come out and play paintball for the day and enjoy yourself. It's a lot of birthdays. It's a lot of kids. We're not doing any of the competition. Like a lot of facilities and a lot of people don't realize paintball is a national sport. Also, there's professional paintball players. We're keeping this in line with what we do at Mel's Funway Park. We want to keep it fun. We want to keep it family orientated. We want groups to come out. That's what we're all about, and that's what we do here. People will be told also when they arrive, if you want to visit the park, do us a favor. At the end of the day, we close off the lot one hour before dusk, and people will be told you have to drive your car out of the lot. If not, it will be closed in. So people will know right off the bat, once the day is done, they need to leave the facility. Is there, I mean... I know you gave me a lot of information, but is, is there equipment that you wear that you have to put on? Or yeah, it's just the helmet. I think yeah, it's just, helmet. just the, the, the helmet is the only thing that's required. Mm -hmm. Everything else is up to people. A lot of people just wear a sweatshirt, you know, like a blousey or sweatshirt. At least every time we've played, we've just put on sweatshirts and gone out. Um, if some you want to wear padding or elbows, I've worn gloves just because of the fact that, you know, your hands are exposed when you're, you know, using the marker. But there is no football shoulder pads or anything like that that's required it's we protect the head the ears the eyes the mouth the whole headgear and is this in a wooded it's going to be in a wooded area where people uh, i know it, i mean paintball obviously i assume that you know you're you know it's the element of surprise i, I don't know <laughs> well that's exactly like it it's, um, it's like picture being a kid and playing cops and robbers or indians and cowboys and going out in the woods and you're playing around and you're running around it's the same concept you, you want the trees, you want the, 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 the bushes, you want that out there. You want nature because that's what you want to be part of. You want to pile up brushes of logs so you can hide behind those. You want to, you know, get behind a group of trees and get behind those. Like, that's what you want. You know, we'll put out, you know, maybe some pallets and we'll uh, put like a V-shaped pallet together so you can get behind the pallet. Nothing is built. There's no structures. There's no floors. There's no 
roofs, everything is pretty much straight flat with maybe a hole in it. So if you want to shoot the marker out of it, you can, but everything is, is natural. That's one of the beauty of what we're trying to do with it. We don't, we don't want to disrupt what's out there. We want it to grow and continue to vegetate. Mr. Chairman, if I may? Yes. Um, I heard you say it closes one hour before dusk, so there's no specific time it closes. Because well, it, it when dark. it starts in spring and yeah. then summer and the, then fall, like the hours will change. Yeah. We'll have it marked on the website. Okay. So when we start in the springtime, you know, if, if let's say it's dark by 7, by 6 o'clock we'll close, and that will be the end of it. Okay. Uh, during the fall, we know that it gets so much darker earlier, so we'll be closed earlier. Uh, one of the things is we will also close two hours before Spooky World ever opens just to make sure that there's never any conflict and there's no traffic on the road at the same time, uh, you know, with, with both businesses there. So for us, that's going to be in the books. No dark, no lights. We don't want to be out there at that point. It's a daylight fun game. Yeah, go ahead. Um, as far as the, do you anticipate people bringing their own paintballs in or no you'll have to use our paintballs have to absolutely 100 percent. you will not be allowed to if you're caught you're ejected immediately it's not even a warning so you, you can only use, use what we have but they yes. can bring their own marker. they can bring their marker exactly but then we're allowed to test it if they choose not to allow us they're not allowed to use it they have to leave the facility <laughs> and is there going to be somebody on there i mean like someone who's supervising it you know in terms of you know making sure that that. There'll be a manager, of course. There'll be a no, manager I, that will be overseeing the referees and overseeing the sales counter. You know, so somebody will be there the entire time as well as our director of operations, Mel's, will be overseeing that manager and then overseeing that staff. So there'll be multiple channels of, you know, training and overseeing and watching over. What about um, like first aid stations or anything like that? We will have a first aid kit like we have at all of our stations at Mel's at that area. We're gonna do it the exact same way where we do a walkie talkie system. We have codes where, knock on wood, let's hope nobody is you know, severely injured. If somebody <laughs> is injured, there's a code that goes over the walkie. It's either to call police or it's to call EMS at that point in time. So we're gonna run it the exact same way that we've run Mel's Funway Park. We've worked something out with the police department and the fire department. We meet with them several times a year to go over how we run our park. Do they want anything changed? Are they okay with the codes that we use and how we do it? And we're just gonna continue it and continue to run it. We haven't had any issues you know, in the 12 years we've been there. So we'll continue to do that unless we see something that isn't working right. And then we'll modify it as we go along. But we have been working with both sides to make sure that they're happy with you know, what we're doing and what we're proposing to do. What about parking? Um, can you talk, tell us a little bit, well, how is that going to work? Um, There'll be a parking lot there. And at Paintball, again, from us going out and talking with other businesses, the majority of the people come three to four to a car. Because, again, it's not a, a onesie or a twosie who show up because you can't play as a onesie or a twosie. You need to be part of a group to be able to go out and play. So we'll have 40 parking spots that will be there at the facility. We're not expecting this to be a very busy paintball facility. I would love to say we expect it to be crazy. Most facilities are 40, 50, 60 acres. If you research and you look and you look a lot at what's out there, this is probably gonna be one of the smallest facilities in the New Hampshire and Massachusetts area for paintball facilities. And by us not promoting to the, the game leagues, that's also gonna cut back on people who are gonna to want to come out to the facility and use it because it is just going to be a fun facility, not a gaming facility where we're going to be doing those types of tournaments and having the professionals and the leagues come out and play. Um, in terms of, I mean, obviously, I, in terms of people going in and playing, I mean, how many people are going to have per a team? You know what I mean? I, I don't know. Is there going to be it like always, you have to make a reservation to go there? Or ninety percent of the people always do make reservations because it's a birthday party or it's a school group, or it's a corporate group, um, or it's a bachelor party, and they're planning this out in advance, and it will say on the website, book ahead of time and plan your party. You know, walk-ons may not be allowed, or we may not be able to accommodate you. Mm -hmm. So it's not like the floodgates are open, 
and people can just come as they choose. We want you to book online because we want to know ahead of time how many people are coming, and then we'll have the ability to shut down the facility if we choose to and stop selling any packages on a particular day. So if there's a corporate group coming out and, you know, let's just say uh, Fidelity wants to come out and have an event, and they're like, well, we want to bring, you know, 100 of our people, well, then we can say, all right, great. Fidelity's going to be out here. Fidelity's going to be here for the day, and then that would be Fidelity's day, and we wouldn't sell any more tickets for that particular day. So it, it will be obviously a learning curve like everything that we've done whenever you open something you do have to learn as you go through the process but i think by going to the national show taking some courses you know visiting you know six to ten facilities talking with owners in learning from the mistakes they made and then finding out how they corrected it we're trying to get ahead of the curve by making some of those adjustments before we start now the um paintball um facility i obviously it's going to be in a wooded area are there going to be trails that are specifically marked or how is that going to i mean is it going to be with gravel or i mean is, is it going to be places to walk in or is it just going to be all wooded and you um... everything is wooded there actually believe it or not there's some paths in there that have already been delineated from you know people who have walked in the past driven i think dirt bikes atvs that type of stuff snowmobiles have gone through We've seen, seen them out there, heard them out there, and we've seen the paths. Those paths will stay as they are, and what will happen is you'll come across that, and then you'll enter your field, whether it's field number one, and then you'd continue along that path. You'd enter field number two. You'd continue along that. You'd enter field number three. What we'll do is there'll be a yellow rope that will delineate that area so you'll know this is your field, field number one. Once you're in the field, it's just being in the woods, it's being in nature. We're not going to tear anything up and make paths once you're in that spot. You'll use nature for what nature has. Does the board have any questions? I know I'm kind of... Have you calculated the max occupancy of what can be, who, how many players can be there in one day? Right now we figure that each field, we're saying on average it'd be about 20. Some birthdays they only book 10 kids, so there might be another field that might have 25 or 30. They're all you know, you know, medium sized field. So it's, if, if a large group like a Fidelity comes out, what we could do is say, all right, we're gonna take field one, field two, field three, field four, take down that in between line and combine those as one field. So again, that's, it's learning a little bit of the curve as to we're gonna start very small and say, all right, we're gonna put 20 out in the field, 20 out in the field, and then say, okay, field number one, that could house 25. Field number two, that's a 15 field. Field number five, you know, it, it will be learning it as we go up because we haven't gone out, we haven't delineated anything to see what's what out there because, of course, we keep the, getting hit with snow on top of snow, so we really haven't been able to, to, to get a feel for, you know, what the layout will truthfully be like. Um, there's there's rest, restroom facilities on that side of the street? On that side of the street, what we're proposing to do is for the first year because I think by the time we get done with everything, it's going to be very late in the season. What we'd like to do is do a, like a PGA type porta potty for the first year, have a septic system and bathroom system designed, and then year two before we open our doors, we would like to put in a bathroom facility there, which will be engineered and put in the correct location and obviously approved for where it's going to go with the septic system there. There's a, there's a building on that site right now that's going to be used for like the sales office for the yes there's, barn. there's a barn that's sitting there and all that. exactly and that's what we'll do the barn you're walking through the front door and you'll have your all your protective helmet gear set up in there behind the counter you'll have your markers there behind the counter and then to the side with like a closed wall we'll have all the paintballs just in a stored room right there and that's what that facility will be it's a concrete floor right now we'll clean it up a little bit but it is it is in the woods, it is paintball. You don't want to, truthfully, you don't want to make it look too pretty. You know, you want to have that rustic look to it. I just want to make sure that people weren't getting all the equipment on the other side of the street and then having to cross the street. No, I absolutely not. Okay, paintball is 100% of the side of the street and that's where it will be located, period. Okay. And there will be signs at all of our locations that will say, if you want to visit paintball, please drive over to that facility. And the same thing on the other side, if you choose to go over to this, you'll be told at your waiver time, if you want to visit the park after, that's fine. You need to drive over because we close the lot off at a certain time so they know they can't get back to get their car will be locked in overnight if they don't drive it out is there availability for handicapped parking spaces in this um 
or is there? Certainly, uh, it'll be at the very front of the uh, parking lot towards the, the sales office. And are you going to be getting a, uh, you said something about a septic system. Are you going to be getting a DES permit for that? Or have you, are you in the process of doing that? Or has that been? Uh, if I could speak to that. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the next draft of the plans that you folks are going to see, um, we'll have a lot more of the detail um, that Mike is talking about. Um, you know, for example, um, we'll be showing where the picnic table area is going to be. We'll be showing if, if there's a need for overflow parking We'll show it. It'll be field parking. It won't be um, asphalt. Um, we'll be showing a, a separate kind of standalone building as the bathroom facility. Um, that uh, DES application has not begun, but um, that's uh, in, in, in the works with respect to laying out where it's going to go into plans, where the septic tank, the leach fields are going to go. Um, so, again, th there's a lot more to be shown in the plans as we go mm -hmm. through this process. Okay. Some questions. Um, do you have any plans to keep people from climbing trees? It'll be part of the rules, you know, not to climb on trees, not to do this, and that's what the referee is out there for. So every game that's out there, you have somebody. It's it's it sounds silly, but it's like recess. Sure. So it's like that monitor who's out there watching the game, saying, "All right, you can't do this. You can't do this." Most of the people are you know, going to be of, of, let's say, the age that know right from wrong. Mm -hmm. So after they're given the rules, they're told, depending upon which particular thing they do, you're either ejected immediately or you're given one warning, and then you're ejected after that. There's a zero tolerance, just like we do with the Mel's Park as well. If you're here to disrupt, if you're here to cause a problem, you're not going to be here at this park any longer. Okay. And um, it's a separate question, but do you have any plans to use this a lot? for Nightmare New England? Would there be a chance of people crossing? No, the Spooky street? World, no. Spooky World is not, Spooky World is just on the Mel side of the street. Like where you see, like where the hayride is, where the haunted attractions are, that's where Spooky World is set up. So, you know, the only customers that do cross the street, that's across a lot directly across from us. But we do have police officers at the site, and then we also get a bonded person who's there in the street during Spooky World. Okay. Um, there are, uh, my understanding is there's wetlands on the site, um, and are you going to be addressing that any, any way in terms of buffers and, um, I don't know, is, do, do you need to get some sort of special exception from zoning, or how is that going to Well, work? I can tell you, first off, we have a meeting with the Con, CONCOM next week, um, on the 28th, yes, is that what it is? Um, and so, uh, again, we'll take their lead. Um, to date, as we have presented this um, to uh, Kevin Lynch um, and others, uh, because of the uh, low quality of the wetlands, the wetland study has been done, we'll get that to you, um, but because of the low quality of the wetlands, there ha hasn't been um, too much concern about the wetlands. Again, there'll be no permanent structures um, out in the field whatsoever. Uh, any, anything that... Uh, <coughs> Um, anything that is installed out there will be temporary in nature, you know, pallets leaning up against each other, maybe big sauna tubes um, out, out in the field. But um, we will, uh, coming out of the CONCOM next week, uh, we will have a better answer for you. Okay. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. Just for my own clarification. Of course. Is this considered two separate? If I was looking at this as one side of the road is one business entity, mm -hmm. and this other paintball is another business entity, is yes. that true, or is it? No, it is. Is it's, it all Mel's? No, it's being set up as a separate <coughs> business, a separate entity by itself. Okay, because uh, you know, if it comes in front of me, I have to say, say I didn't say we have Mel's on this side. It's mm -hmm. already been approved, and you're in business. Mm -hmm. I would have to look at this as a separate business, not related. Mm -hmm. But because I think they are related, whether the sign has the same font on it or something. Thing. I think, again, the 3A is what we have to be concerned about from a liability from the town of people trying to cross because they're going to be curious of what's over there. Mm -hmm. And they're going to park where they can park. And I'm just saying a lot might park on the side that exists today because mm -hmm. the family is going to come with different mm -hmm. age groups and some are going to go that way and some are going to want to go here. So If they do go to the websites, they will see right off that. Again, you know, we, we will do everything in our power. You know, we've also talked about 
on days which the only day that we think that would ever get busy would be a Saturday because that seems to be the day that's busy at every other facility that's out there. If we ever get to the point that we think that there's an issue, we will post an employee there and we will turn people around at the spot and say, I'm sorry, you're not allowed to cross. You're going to have to go back. So we've already, we're already trying to put something in place and keep an eye on that and managers will keep an eye on that and we will take that as it comes. If it becomes an issue, we'll deal with it. Of course, we'll have signage on both sides saying you're not allowed to cross the street. You must do this. One of the things that, you know, we do have, we do have kids to this day that drive down 3A from the neighborhoods to visit Mel's all day long. And we have neighbors who walk down after a day of, you know, having a dinner on a Saturday or Sunday that get an ice cream in our facility and then walk back down 3A. There, there, like, there are certain things that we have under our control that we will do everything in our power to stop and we will do everything in our power to make sure that people are not crossing there as well. And like I said, if it ever gets to a point where we feel it's busy on that Saturday, we will have an employee posted just to be there to tell people, no, I'm sorry, you're not allowed to, you know, you have to go back. So you're handling it with signage at this point? Right now, State signage. Road, right? So that's going to be another, I have to look at those regulations when the report shows up. Okay. It, so, but those you're are, trying, those you're are little. to put a list together to stop the crossing from both yes, directions. Yes, exactly. So they're having lunch break at the paintball side and they want to get something to eat on the other side. Well, their referee is with them. So the way it's going to work is they will be told, remember, when they first arrive, they will be told up front, you're not allowed to cross the street. So they're being told when they arrive and they're filling out their waivers and they're getting their markers, that's part of the rules that they are being given, that this is not something you're allowed to do. If you're caught doing this, I'm sorry, you're not going to be allowed to continue with paintball. So they're so, signing something. Yes, yeah, so we are going to do, again, everything in our power to try to get that handled, you know, up front. Again, I've never been to a facility that has onesies, twosies show up and leave after an hour or two. It's always a... I've always done a planned event. The people who I've talked to, their planned events, they go to the website, they're you know, letting you know they're coming to the facility. Like you said, there might be some people that might show interest and in, we're gonna do everything in our power to, to mitigate that. If I could add to that. Um, last week, Mike, Wayne and I met with um, our police chief, uh, told him exactly what we're doing, um, told him about the concern that you folks expressed to us before about crossing 3A. He did not have any uh, concerns and he said, you know, you, you're gonna have some busy Saturdays and maybe we're gonna, maybe we, the police department, are gonna have to come out there. Maybe they have to hire a detail um, on the busier Saturdays. That, that's fine. I mean, he did not um, exhibit any strong concerns one way or the other on that issue. Uh, and again, that's one of the things outstanding. We, we do hope to get um, a statement from both the fire chief and the police chief. Back to you folks. Yeah. Anybody have anything? Back to the weather. We said we were meeting with uh, conservation of the, uh, the types of balls that are being used. Um, would assume they're eco friendly. 100%. That's why we're not allowing anybody to bring anything onto our facility. They can only use what we have. Mm -hmm. So there's no, there's no environmental impact at all. The cut sheets that I think would be provided. Yeah, we have our. We'll specify on that. that. Mm -hmm. we'll, be, we'll be providing all those too. What about porta potties? Is there going to be a need for that or no? That's the just the first season, only because of the fact that by the time everything gets done, we'll have porta potties to get through year one. But then that year two, we'll be building the bathroom at the front of the facility. And because of the fact after you play two games, you go back in because you have to have your tank refilled with air because that's how the paintball comes out of your marker. So you're constantly going back to the front at the beginning of every game. So that's where the bathrooms will be located. So they'll always be there for you if you need a restroom. You're not playing for two, three hours straight ever because again, your marker will run out of air and you can't play anymore. So what happens is you'll go out, you'll play maybe somewhere around 20, 40 minutes, then you head back up to the front. So at maximum, you'd be without a bathroom for 40 minutes. I think that everybody will, you know, will be able to use the facility before they go out or, and after they go out. We won't be putting porta parties out in the woods or anything like that. And what about the equipment to do this? Is this gonna be stored in 
uh, a builder on the site, or is it going to be in that barn? Locked, that barn or? that's there. Yes, it'll be locked in the barn. The barn that's presently there right now, we're going to use that to hold the markers. We'll be using that to hold the paintballs, and that's will be that will be the the main register counter where your helmets and all are as well. And I assume those will be when it's not in use will be locked at all times. And of course. Sure that... Yes, it's locked up now. I mean, it's 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 been there. You know, it's been used throughout the entire time that you know Mel's has been open and it's locked up but we're just going to modify it a little bit to, to to bring it a little bit more user friendly anything else from the board can you show me on there where that 75 foot buffer is certainly if you look right here so from the very beginning here it'll come out it'll go around it'll go around It'll go all the way down, all the way here. So it goes all the way. Point. So it's pretty much the entire, if you look at the whole property, whole it's the entire property yeah, the all the way down. Yeah. Exactly. Mike, can okay. you show us too? Oh, yes. Right it starts right here. It'll go all the way down the side, across the entire back of the entire facility, all the way down along the side property where the road is, all the way back out along where Charles Bancroft is here, 75 foot buffer here, 75 foot buffer here, and then it go back out to the front here where the highway is again and there's no paintball being played anywhere in that buffer none of the, f You're the not four allowed fields to are in that because okay. you'll have here again you'll have the first line you'll have a four foot snow fence that wraps around the whole thing you have a referee who's within that area watching everybody the whole time yep. so this area here nothing will ever be played nobody will ever be in that area we will never be in that area so we don't need to be in that area that will be left natural as it is right now nothing will change in that and then wherever the netting is required because of you know, elevations, you'll have the nettings up. Exactly. Right in front of those and that's something that can be worked out as the footage to where it goes, yeah. whether it's placed in a certain location because we don't want it to disrupt. So if we have to move it further in so it doesn't disrupt some of the views of some of the people, then that's what we'll do as well. So it's not an eyesore for people to see. Super. Um, Jay, I know you are our <laughs> resident uh, planner this evening. Filling in for Jen, is there anything that um, else that we should be aware of? Do we know that? Uh, do you have any concerns that you would like to address um, with the applicant? I think as you, you probably noted in the staff report, uh, there were several questions and concerns that were raised. I think most of which have been addressed this evening. Uh, definitely had concerns around uh, the wetlands and those potential impacts. So it'll be good to hear back from the Conservation Commission. Uh, and a lot of questions around the intensity of use and kind of how the site was being used. So certainly, I think some of the explanations tonight helped clarify that. Um, I would wonder, when you when you reference some additional courses on the site, I, I'd be curious to see, are you going to be delineating those on the plan? They will be delineated, but the tough part is, is right now, because we haven't been out there and because we haven't met with conservation, so we don't know exactly where each one will be lined up as of today. And certainly seeing the revised plans, seeing where proposed permanent restrooms uh, are going to be, I think will be very valuable. I think it would also be valuable to see uh, an example of the netting uh, that, that's being proposed. I think it would be you know, certainly very helpful for everyone. And then again, we, you know, as noted previously, we have a lot of written comments which have been provided. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, now, in terms of this site, are, are there any particular waivers in terms of this site versus the, the next part, which is the bumper boats and kitty features? If there is, I, maybe we can just go through them um, and just address those, and then we'll move on to the next part of the site plan. Yeah. Not for you. Uh, the answer of Mr. Chairman is yes. We have a specific waiver request for lot 20-14 mm -hmm. for the paintball and specifically uh, there were four waiver requests that I submitted um, to you and if you want we can address those now. Well, if you want to just let us know what those are. And, I don't know um, if you're going to address them tonight, or I could just call them out and maybe you address them. I as we don't get to know them. if we're necessarily going to address them tonight, but we just if we can go over them, okay. and then we can move on to the next part. Here they come. Ready? Okay. Uh, first is section 120.14, um, uh, numbers 1 and 2, uh, involving interior landscaping and tree cover. Um, this has to do with the um, 
dressing up the parking lot um, as if this were a uh, strip mall or a uh, Hannaford site um, coming to town. Um, we uh, intend to keep all the existing vegetation. We're asking for a waiver of this because of the nature of the site um, being, being a paintball facility. Uh, the next one, Mr. Chairman, is uh, section 150-7, um, re requiring a one inch to 50 foot plan scale. And due to the size of the lot, um, we um, have a one inch to 100 foot plan scale. We believe we provided the details necessary for the board to, uh, to act on the plan. Next waiver request, Mr. Chairman, um, and, the, and, and you'll find these are uh, repetitive to the other applications, um, mm -hmm. plan scale, and, and the next one is site-specific soils. Um, we have uh, section 150-7M. Um, again, we've provided USDA um, soil um, mapping. Uh, we believe that's sufficient for the board's needs given the very limited um, development of the site that, that, that we're presenting. Um, and then section 160 uh, are the buffer requirements um, between a commercial uh, development and the residential um, requirements. And the buffer requirements um, require various types of ornamental trees within the buffer and, 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 and to really beef up the, um, the thickness of the vegetation. We believe that allow, keeping that 75 foot buffer bigger than the setback uh, that we'll have fenced off will satisfies the intent of that, uh, that uh, regulation. And those are the four waiver requests for the paintball operation. Does the board have any questions of the applicant <coughs> as to that those particular waivers? I do. Go ahead. Um, just for my own clarity. Sure. Um, the one about the site-specific soils, the, the description, I just want to understand it personally on the... Uh, it said it, it, it was submitted to meet the intent of the regulation, but I just don't know what the intent of the regulation means. Um, the um, intent of the site, well, I, I, I would ask uh, Brent um, or Tony to uh, uh, further on this. Uh, the intent is to provide you folks as much information, and it largely has to do with um, septic systems, um, perk tests, and those, those type of things. Because you're going to um, put one on later, right? So, system, yeah, so the, the intent of the site-specific soil survey is to give a, a little bit more accurate um, depiction of what soils are actually out there. The USDA comes in as on a broad span, and a site-specific soil survey is done by a certified soil scientist that comes in and does it very specific. We are required to get this for drainage, not, not septic, actually. DES subsurface allows USDA for the design of septic systems. Altera alteration of terrain requires the site-specific soil survey. We don't trigger alteration of terrain in this instance, and we actually don't have any stormwater practices that infiltrate stormwater. So the USDA is a perfectly fine approach um, in our stormwater model uh, for this. We've also dug multiple test pits on site, and the soil is in line with what USDA uh, says the soil is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And will you have a stormwater eventually, a stormwater, or do you do you have a stormwater oh, drainage? Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Stormwater uh, manual is uh, submitted to you guys. It is also being reviewed by your review engineer. Um, like I said before, the, the parking lot is treated through a stormwater practice. Everything is treated, mitigated. Peak flows are reduced um, before discharge back into the wetlands. Um, you should know that Lou Karen um, has plans, application, the stormwater report, um, and the review. Um, those are, there's not a lot of, a great deal of engineering uh, with what we're presenting, uh, but there are a couple places Lou has to weigh in for you. All right. Does the board have any more questions about, specifically about the paintball site, the waivers, issues, anything of that nature? With the buffer, is there any way sort of a, a condition or covenant maybe saying that there is no, they cannot encroach in that 75 foot buffer that they've laid out. It's not even a, a real setback. It's they have said that they're gonna have this 75 foot buffer. Mm -hmm. Can we put a condition of some sort that they cannot go into that 75 foot buffer unless coming back to the town if they want to build additional fields into those buffers in the future? 
that those buffers cannot be, you know, they can't put additional fields or playing fields or um, structures or anything in the in that the 75 foot buffer that they've laid out. Mm -hmm. you know, well, I mean, it's, it would be part of the conditional well. approval process, probably, but. I mean, I don't know. You want to address that, Attorney Coleman? Um, certainly, and I can address it by simply saying the answer is yes. Um, we can add um, a note to be uh, or, or a document to be recorded at the Registry of Deeds uh, describing this buffer um, as making it part of this plan, uh, and say perhaps uh, if the plan does get re recorded, um, the immediate document there right after would be a like a, a buffer requirement. Right. We'd be happy to do that. I think we've heard some concern on that, where if you have the buffer and that's good and that's going to, you know, that'll, it'll prevent stray stuff and noise and all that. But, mm -hmm. you know, there's concern that you guys get bigger, you grow, you, it starts to become more popular, you may want to encroach into that and build more fields in those areas. Well, if we were to do that in the future, you'd have to come back to a board right. or the town. And that's fine. And how we would go back in here. That's perfectly fine. All right. Um, at Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, Sorry. It's a little late, but um, what had you decide on a 10-foot fence? Is there some kind of? It's the standard in the industry. When we went to the show, and we went out, and we saw what other people did, and we learned what other people did. That seems to be the standard, you know, that people would set up for keeping strays from going anywhere else. Okay, because isn't, and I'm not completely familiar with the area, but um, the houses back there are they up a hill like if yes that, both sides block? both sides Those of the houses? field on both sides is a, i mean it's a gigantic hill that runs up on both sides it's more or less a precaution on top of a precaution on top of a precaution that we want to put that there on top of the 75 foot buffer going up the hill and then having that it's just something that we want to do as as an extra to make sure that there aren't any issues but as far as line of sights go the the template beds wouldn't physically block the houses from being Well, that's one of the things that, like I said, it will go back and forth in different areas because we don't want to disrupt somebody who's looking out. So in some areas, it could be 35 feet back, so it's not in the way off the line. It could be this far. So that's something that, as we're out there, we'll make sure that it's not a disruption. Or, I'm sorry, I mean uh, line of sight, meaning from the paintball gun. It's a 10-foot fence. Is that going to physically block a house from being hit or somebody being hit in their yard? The distance you can shoot. Oh, yes, absolutely, without a doubt. Like, if where these are being placed, it's, well, it's, it's going to be within that buffer. So somebody would have to be in the buffer if they were going to get hit with that. This is just one of those precautions that we're putting that out there in the buffer. So if one goes stray, it hits that fence and right. goes down, and it won't just continue. Because if somebody's in the buffer area, not meaning us, but if somebody's from the yard coming out into the buffer area where they shouldn't, at least there'll be a fence there to keep that from going any further. If I may, um, you also said that there is that the potential maximum for these um, guns was going to be about 100 feet anyway. So yes, that's that exactly. That, that's exactly what we're going to gauge them at. 80 to 100 feet yeah. is the max that they'll go. So. If you try to shoot it up the hill the way it is, yeah. I mean, it, it's such a it. dramatic, I, I wish I could explain yeah. how high it is. That's if, but there's nothing physically preventing anybody from adjusting these guns. It's your They're ours, they can't. They're like, the ones that are ours, once we key those down, we have the key. Okay. So they can't adjust them. If you bring your own marker out there, we will adjust them down. The referees who are out there, they're going to be trained to be able to see, like normally, if you and I are playing and I fired a paintball at you on the other side, you'd actually be able to see that paintball coming at you. You'd see it and you'd know it's coming. If a referee recognizes or feels that there's something out of line or just chooses to want to test anything at any point in time, we will have the devices throughout that whole property so at any point in time we can check a marker to make sure that it's still regulated the way we want it to be regulated. Okay. Is there, do any uh, paintball areas that you've visited... Do they ever take the keys from people so that like they take, can't? Like take somebody's them? actual key? Yeah, like, you know. I don't think that any, I don't think, I've never heard of anybody okay. taking their key away. Uh, nobody's ever brought it up. The referees out there have always handled, you know, those situations from, 
from what we've been told by the people we've met with. Right, but that's just that's reactionary. It's not preventative. So I wanted to see if there were anything, anything else we can do to. I mean, we could ask people if they'd leave their keys in their car and not bring them in. We can absolutely ask people to do that without a doubt. Um, again, you know, it's a little key. If it's 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 like if somebody hides something in their shoe or something, right. you know. Yeah. But we, you know, we'll do everything, and we're going to have there. If you're caught turning up your marker at any time, you'll be ejected from the property. So. Okay. You know, they're, they're going to know there's a consequence. It's not just going to be, hey, don't do that again, because mm -hmm. every marker will be tested. It will be the way we want it to be tested. If your marker gets retested because we think there's something wrong with it, and there is something wrong with it, and miraculously it's been turned up, you will be escorted off the property. You're gone for the day. Okay. And is there any kind of limit on um, if, a, say, if somebody brings a paintball gun that their lowest setting is too high? They won't be able to use it at the facility. Yeah. yeah. And if it doesn't mass? follow our regulation, it will not be used. They'll have to use one of ours. Okay. Is, and is there any, any max that you're going to set that whether they're allowed to? It would be that 80 to 100. To? It would be the 80 to 100 feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they'd still be adjustable to get, possibly get higher than that. Potentially, yes. Potentially. Yes, okay. potentially they could be, but none of ours will be because ours will be set. Okay. You know, period. Okay. Thank you. And I, I imagine you were going to have some sort of posting, if you were to do this on the site, where you're going to have like a sign that basically outlines, you know, what it is that you can't do and can't do. Is that what you're doing? It'll be inside that sales room when you're going to check in. It'll also be within the, the rules of the well. rules of the game or whatever. And, or the rules of the It'll be in the waiver that you signed the facility. It will also be on the wall and then the referee will also explain those before the games. Okay. Um, all right. I want to move on now to the uh, bumper boats and kitty features. Um, and uh, Attorney Perlman, if you want to address that particular part of the site plan, lots 2015 and 2017. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, again, lot 2015, uh, uh, where the Laserplex uh, building um, is uh, currently um, is owned by the Plex Realty Trust. Again, Wayne um, Caulfield and Michael Commando, lot 2017, uh, the larger facility where the mini mills um, is going to be located, um, uh, is owned by the KBT Realty Trust. Again, Wayne Caulfield and Michael Commando. Um, the let me just tell you right up front we're showing a bump out um, a building addition on the uh, laserplex building you will not see that on the next plan uh, we're taking that off the uh, application uh, that's before you um, it's uh, it's not necessary at this time so we're going to be removing that that feature um, on the um, I get Brent could probably do this better than I can we have, the, we have the pool, there's some septic issues, and then the mini mills uh, we, we, we can describe. Sure. So the final site plan that we have before you is regarding lot 15 here and lot 17. 15, as Mr. Pullman stated, is the laser plex with the associated parking, and lot 17 is the bulk of Mel's funway. Currently, lot 15 has two driveways. The, the first component of this site plan is removing those two driveways and consolidating down to one that is directly across the street from the proposed paintball park. Both these lots, as with the paintball park, are within the Northern uh, Commercial Zoning District and both have access off Route 3A. That is why we want to try to reduce the amount of driveway curb cuts along 3A, 3A there and make it more safe for the public. We are, so the first, the, this site is proposing a proposed bumper boat pool. We are relocating a ticket booth from the golf, uh, the driveway range to this area. The pool will be circulated by a concrete sidewalk and fencing. And it does take up a portion of the site today that was parking. The the new bumper boat pool and the reconfigured driveway will remove 25 spaces, but there's plenty of parking along Mel's Funway to make up for that for all the uses on the site. 
because we are relocating or consolidating the two driveways, this plan does require a DOT permit. And because this bumper boat is impedes on an existing septic field, we will need a septic permit through New Hampshire DES for a new septic field to the west of lot 15. Lot 17 is, like I said, where the bulk of Mel's Funway is. And in the area colored here, we're proposing four uh, inflatable bounce houses, a kitty bumper boat, a kitty go-kart go track, and a gem dive in what is we call mini Mel's. And it's meant for uh, the kids that want to come to Mel's Funway. This portion of Mel's Funway will utilize this, the existing parking that's out site, and this replaces the the uh, driving range that currently exists today. That's all I have on, on the site. Okay. Does the applicant have anything else they want to add to? Add anything? Do you need any description on anything from the kitty land? You want yeah, I mean, if you have anything, if you want to tell us a little bit about what that's going to look right. like or, you know. What kitty can, what the kitty land is going to be is this spot right here, the gem dive he's talking about, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the gem dive. It's like the old-fashioned coal miners. The little kids come out. This area is going to be specified for pretty much two to eight-year-old, maybe nine, ten-year-old max. We've missed that mark at Mel's since Mel's is open. It's always been geared to kids a little bit older. The go-karts, the batting cages, the mini golf. You can only keep, you know, a small child on mini golf for so long. So we've, we've missed it. So this is geared towards that smaller little crowd where mom and dad can come in and bring the little ones and keep them in one little area. So the gem dive, you, you get your big bag of sand and then you put it in the shifter, you walk up to the water and you shift it through the water and the next thing you know, these, these gems appear inside your shifter and then the kids obviously get to take that home. The bounty houses, I think everybody knows a bounty house. We'll have all different bounty houses for the kids to, to play in and bounce in. And the bumper boat area for the children, that's a setup and take down each year. So that's not out during the winter time. It's a little blow up one. I believe it's about, I think 16 inches high, you know, with water where the employee, if they choose to, can walk around with the kids. It's very slow moving. The parents, if they wanted to, could walk around with the kids in there as well. And then of course, the, the little go-kart track for the kids. It's just for the little ones. I think a lot of people have seen the little go-karts that they sell um, you know, Toys R Us, it's maybe a little gator or it's a little tractor in it. They drive around and these kids will be in a little go-kart. So now if the bigger brother or sister is on the big track, they still feel like they're big and important also because they're driving their own little go-kart themselves as well on their track. So that's what that small area is for. It's for the little ones. And then, of course, the bumper boat area. It's uh, bumper boats for people have always asked, geez, you know, you ever thought about something to, during the hotter time, etc.? These boats during the hotter times, they'll have little squirt guns attached to them. So while you're out there, you'll be able to squirt each other while you're out there in the boats, going back and forth, bouncing around. Um, and then during the cooler periods, we have the right to shut it off and we can shut that switch off so they don't squirt. And it is exactly what it is. You'll go in, we're gonna set up like, you know, a little area to make it look like it's a little fishing village area that you're bumper boating around in. So it just doesn't look like a pool just sitting in a parking lot. So we'll theme it with, you know, some different stuff all around it to make it look, you know, more attractive, so to speak. Does the board have any questions of the applicant? I think we went over a lot of this last, last time. In terms of, is there going to be any additional parking or anything on that side of the building? Oh, when you say additional, I mean, right now, I think that's yeah, what you're talking about. Like I said before, we, we are removing a few parking spaces, and in order to prevent having to come back here, I do pro provide seven future parking spaces on this, but these won't be constructed unless they are needed. So within the first year or two, if, if they do get a little bit busier and, and feel the need to, to construct those seven parking spaces, they will. Mr. Chairman, yes. we, we believe that um, we are showing and providing um, sufficient parking for, for this, this piece of the puzzle, this, this part of the operation. Um, however, if we find that uh, we have inadequate parking um, over the summertime, um, Wayne and Mike um, have uh, the 
a budding parcel under agreement. Um, I think that's map 20 lot seven immediately to the west. Um, and if necessary, uh, we can put parking there. We can shift a lot line back so all the parking is on, on, on one lot. Um, it, we are proposing that to be on an as needed basis because we believe we have sufficient parking as is. But there's plenty of room for uh, ample parking if needed uh, in the future. And the range is closing. I think you know the range is coming down. So we're getting rid of 35 stalls mm -hmm. are going out and being replaced by 20 bumper boats and then the little kitty land area. Okay. This is in, is this, this is in the, is this within the quarter mile of the Merrimack River, the 250 foot yes, it quarter is. mile? So have you submitted any plans to the lower Merrimack River Local Advisory Committee? So typically we submit to the lower, to the Limerlack um, if we require to get a shoreland permit or an alteration of terrain permit. Mm -hmm. These disturbance levels are so low we don't trigger alteration of terrain and we're not within, uh, we're not close to the 250. Uh, the 250s are way back here and, and we're hundreds of feet away from the, the 250 foot shoreland protection zone. And are there any particular waivers for this site, Attorney Program? Do you want to address? Um... Mr. Chairman, we um, submitted three waiver requests for this um, application, mm -hmm. just to just to call them out uh, without necessarily taking action on them. Mm -hmm. And you will recall I mentioned there's some redundancy in uh, what I submitted. Uh, section 150.7, the 50-foot plan scale. Uh, section 150.7M, site-specific soils. Um, and section 150-7U, uh, structure areas. And that regulation calls um, uh, for the uh, square footage and the first floor uh, footage of all the buildings um, on site. Um, and uh, Keech Nordstrom did not do that because these buildings, um, because the, the, we're not adding any buildings per se. Mm -hmm. um, all the mini mills um, area are just temporary structures. You have the dimensions of the pool, the existing buildings on site, the laser plex, the restaurant, the mills barn um, have been uh, in town for uh, decades. And we didn't believe it would be necessary and be a hardship to the applicant to have to go that extra step. Um, but we believe you have the information necessary uh, with respect to the um, the pool and the um, and the mini mills area. This is within the aquifer protection. Is this this is within the aquifer protection district? Is that my understanding? Yeah, the entire and, town is an aquifer. Well, <laughs> with that <laughs> set aside, <laughs> and, that's, and that's what triggers our trip to the conservation commission. Besides okay. the wetland issue, but um, in an aquifer protection district, the CONCOM has to give their input to the planning board. So that's why we're there next week. Okay. All right. Do the members of the board have any? Further questions for Mr. Perlin? Jay, do you have anything you would like to add at this point? Uh, n not a significance. I, I think that, you know, again, we, we did have uh, written comments that, that were submitted. I, I think similar, although to a lesser extent than the uh, paintball side, I think getting an understanding of how this is going to operate, how it's going to happen functionally, I think is, is helpful. Uh, and, and I was remiss in not noting previously, but I think in both cases, it'd be helpful to have a written description of how the operations work. We also know that there are, and this has been alluded to, that various aspects of what's happening on, and I'll say these sites are seasonal. And so kind of getting an understanding of that and having that a part of the written record, I think would be very helpful as well. So we have a, a good understanding of both kind of the impact, the volume of people and the times of year that these are going to be uh, happening. That's fine. You will, the board will have that. Okay. Awesome. Board have anything they would like to add? Okay. All right. 
at this time, I am going to actually open this up to public comment. Um, under RSA 91A, this is an open meeting, public meeting, and we so have uh, members of the public with us this evening. Um, I believe we have abutters here this evening uh, who have been notified of this project. Um, I'm going to ask that um, if you are going to speak, to please keep your comments to at least, um, if you can, three to five minutes, um, if possible. Um, be as brief as you can, and also uh, be polite and courteous. And if you have any questions of the applicant, this is your opportunity uh, to ask them. Uh, so what I'm going to ask is whoever is going to start uh, to come forward sitting at the table. You're going to address your name, uh, address if necessary, who you are, and um, why you're here tonight, and basically um, what your concerns are. You can address those to me. If there are any questions for Attorney Perlman, certainly you can, you can ask those as well. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Okay, so if you, I, I know I, unfortunately, you know, I should have, what I should have done is had a sheet so that we could have a little yeah. bit more organized. Do, you understand? Uh, Do I have to sit? You don't have to okay. sit. Well, as long as you're vocal okay. and, and I, so the, the people can hear you. No, and, Bob uh, McDonald, I live at 442 Charles Bank uh, Highway with my wife, Carol. Uh, we bought, the, we built the house in 2005. Uh, and I just, everybody's talking about lots. I, I know that uh, without looking at it, I get a look at the, is the addre actual address on these lots? Mm. Uh, it is. I can see it right here. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, can I speak to you? Or, yes, or, 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 where, where is this parking lot actually, this 40 vehicle parking lot being located? Could you, can you show me where that is? This spot here. Okay. How far is that off the road? Do you, have you ever seen the barn that's off the yes, road? Yes, I have, yeah. So it's directly in front of that barn. So there's a tree line here, mm -hmm. and that will be directly in front of that okay, barn. Okay, and this is the access end? Yes, right here. So that's where the laser tag is. Okay. And this is where this two entrance is now here. We're going to only make one entrance, and there'll be an entrance directly across from that. It'll come straight down mm -hmm. right in front of the barn building. Right okay, here. and is this some of the fields that they'll be playing in? Yes, yes, okay. this year. Okay, uh, any over here? Or? Yes, yes, and then the okay. in so this area. Okay, so at one time, at full capacity, how many people would you expect at full capacity? The absolute max right now from what we've talked about, about 100 people, we feel for this size field for what we're going to have here for people to play. Okay. That would be, you know, the max today. Okay. In three years, four years, eight years, I can't answer that, but right now talking to people in the industry and telling them what we're trying to do. Uh, you made a you made a comment that uh, from study from other paintball places that uh, you think that two or three people will be coming at a time in a vehicle. Yes, that's been. What happens at a hundred capacity and they don't do that? The funny part about is they, when they book an event of let's say twenty people, they all have to drive in one car. They don't all have to drive in one car. We will have overflow here if need be, if that becomes an issue. But again, it was all, it's the same thing as when we purchased Mel's and we learned about the go-karts, the bumper boats. You're learning from what other people have done. It would be probably the first time in the history of a paintball facility for 100 people to show up on 100 cars. And if that was ever the case, I think that the local police department would be on us immediately saying you're causing an issue and we would then have to figure out something to do at that point. So you're saying that you're ready for overflow? Absolutely, 100%. So this 40 spot vehicle parking lot could actually exceed that? If we needed to, yes, it could without a doubt, easily. Okay, now I know that you put a lot of time and effort into this, but these new facilities and all this, you've invested probably a lot of time and money in this so far. Have you at one time thought of what it's gonna to do to the abutters property value? Well, one of the reasons that we have thought about a lot of it, and that's one of the reasons we put that buffer around the entire property to make sure, well, there's nothing on this side here, there's, there's, there's nothing going on on this side of the road at all. So this all these trees are going to be going to be very noisy, very, very noisy. And there's no way out of that. I've been to them. This is going to be very noisy. I'm telling you, from my perspective, from our property, we're not going to, we're going to lose our value because of this in my opinion and i can't see how it's going to raise it i see it lowering it i mean if you can tell me different i'm ready to listen to you i, I would respect your opinion i'm not here to debate your opinion i'm I understand just here that. saying that you know, 
this particular piece of property is zoned a particular property. We're doing everything in our power to try to appease everybody we can with what we can do at this particular site right here. So we're, we're trying to do everything we can and do it correctly and do it right. So basically, and I'm not being disrespectful, but basically you're telling me that I really don't care about outside that. No, we care about a lot. That's one of well, the reasons that we're a family entertainment park and we're, we're putting in a kiddie land because one of the reasons is a lot of grandparents can't bring their small kids down. A lot of parents have complained because there isn't a spot for the kids to play. So we are listening to customers who have been coming to us for years upon years upon Mike, years. Mike, 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 Mike. Do you have uh, any, I mean... Just one I, last question. Yeah, okay. One last question. Because uh, I want to kind of limit it so that we can get everybody. This, uh, I, I actually heard at the very end of it that if it does start to get busy, mm -hmm. that they're going to use the cornfield for additional parking. Mm -hmm. Am I correct on that? Right now, we've never done that in the, the 12 years for Mel's. I don't from expect what I that. Can, we've never from, exceeded that. If, if I'm an imaginary, if I can envision this, I can tell you that this is going to explode. This is, uh, is, is going to explode. And I can tell you that if that happens, that cornfield from 10 o'clock in the morning till dusk is going to be utilized three seasons out of the four. Guaranteed. I would have to disagree. Well, okay, I hope, you're, I hope you're right. Okay, all right, all right. Thank you very much. Property value gone. All right, uh, who would like to speak uh, next? Come forward, um, state your name and address. My name is Joanne Giles. And I have the fortune to own this piece of property right here. Oh, address, address, please. Uh, 439, Charles Bancroft Highway. So I'm going to be bordered on two sides by your new project, which, and I agree with my neighbor over here about the noise issue because I'm going to have people behind me and beside me um, most of the day, as he said, for most of the seasons. Um, I understand there's a buffer. I have a question about the brook. There's a brook that runs here and here. Um, it goes into my property. Yeah, how is, how is that going to be managed? Are you going to be impacting against that? No, playing we won't on be either side? It. We'll be on just the opposite side of that brook. Okay, this field here. Nothing will be out there. This, the field that's, that's currently plowed, it's yes, going to be natural? natural? 100%. And so you're only going to be playing here? Yes. Okay, on the other side of the brook. Because yes. I really didn't want to have to be looking at these kids out there. Um, my other question, alcohol. No alcohol, I assume, when you're be with, on a paintball field? You're not allowed to drink and play paintball. Field. Okay, but there'll be alcohol in the restaurant across the street. So if somebody comes in after, and... After hours, if they choose to go over there. And they don't bring it in in their picnic baskets, right? No. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, I'm glad you addressed the um, amount of people that will be playing because I really didn't get the quantity. I don't know how many fields you have. You didn't really state that. We haven't had the opportunity to go out and measure out the fields yet to say okay, how so, many will actually be out there. So looking at this, I'm going to have one right next to my lot line here, another one across from um, Ronnie, and I assume this is going to be another one here behind the duplex in my house. So it I'll, I'll have fields on two sides of me. Yeah. Okay. Um, not exciting, but <laughs> it is what it is, I guess. Um, I have one more question. Okay. I don't know what it was. It'll, it'll come to me, I'm sure. We'll be discussing all this stuff again, I'm sure, of before course. it comes, comes to fruition, I hope. You can contact us at any time. If you have a question at any time, uh, you know, actually, I, I, I would. When you guys come out to survey your land and where your fields are going to be, can the abutters be involved? Can you say, hey, we're going to be outside your property line tomorrow and we're going to be walking where our fields are going to be? Could you let us know so we have an idea where things are going? Sure. I mean, is there any reason why we can't be involved in this process that's going to impact us so much? I think the survey work is done, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. I know they surveyed, but I was told they were surveying because of the uh, water lines when I talked to the surveyors. They didn't tell me they were surveying. This is the first I've heard of this whole project. Okay, well, Attorney Perlman, go ahead. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, um, for the record, um, Andy Perlman, I, I believe, uh, uh, Tony and Brent can correct me, but I believe the survey work is done. However, um, I know that the uh, 
planning board more likely than not will want a site walk of this uh, of both sides, um, mm -hmm. not just the paintball, as we go through this process. Um, and so that's a public, um, you know, a public hearing. It's a, it's a public meeting. It's a public meeting. It's a public, it's a public meeting. meeting. Yeah. Um, but it's open the to site walk, to yes. attend. Yeah, it's open for so all So will there be visit. a notification to us as abutters that there's a site walk? No. Well, well yeah, no, 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 no. Okay. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. um, a site walk will be scheduled in a public session like this. Right. So you will know from attending these, these hearings when the site walk is going to be. Okay. And we'll tell you. Just, yeah. listen, just give us a call. Okay. Um, and I guess I just have one more comment. I know you're talking about seven parking spaces, but I can't believe that you would be putting all the time and expense into this whole project for seven cars. So I really think that you're expecting to have a good return on your investment. Well, I would hope so. Getting rid of the driving range, so. So, so, so I think that you'll have um, more traffic impact during the season. And then with the big building going in down the street, I think this is going to be a very busy piece of road and I'm sure that you guys have taken that into account. And if you've driven here in the summer and during your spooky world, you know that this is a real bottleneck. During, so I would really hope that you guys are considering that as well when you're doing your planning. Okay. okay. Th Thank those you. are my comments. Thank you very much. Anybody else next? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Morgan Hollis. I'm an attorney at Gottesman and Hollis in Nashua. And I'm here representing uh, Richard and Jill Charbonneau, who live at 401 Charles Bancroft Highway. And Rick is here with me. Um, and the Charbonneaus have a number of concerns. We've raised a number of the concerns to the uh, applicant, uh, the applicant's attorney and engineer. And uh, some of them have certainly been uh, addressed, although um, the difficulty is we don't have a plan that shows what the actual action is. We've heard this evening uh, a number of changes from what this plan is going to be, and so I guess my first comment is I kind of take serious issue with the board accepting a plan which we've now been told is going to be substantially changed. There won't be an addition. There's going to be a location of a bathroom shown. There's going to be septics shown. So we essentially don't have a plan that we know what we can comment on. So that being said, I'm going to comment on what's presented before you. Um, and some of those comments may be inapplicable based on what we've heard this evening as to how these plans may change. But I think they're important comments. Um, there should be a traffic impact study. And uh, I believe that's been represented that there will be one. But one of your conditions of acceptance of a plan is that a traffic study has to be submitted with the plan. And it has not been. So really until that traffic study is submitted and the public has a chance to see it, um, I, would, I would ask the board not schedule a, the next meeting and then we have the traffic study submitted. Some of the public may not even know it's submitted and then everybody comes to the next meeting and there's the traffic study and nobody's had a chance to review it. So unless we're monitoring, it's going to be very difficult to know. That's why your requirements and most requirements say when you submit an application, you shall submit the traffic study, you shall submit the waiver request. All of those things come in with the plan so that someone who's interested in it can see the plan, see what's going on, and see the study results. So I don't know how the board will handle that, but I only ask you to consider that uh, difficulty with the abutters. Um, we won't know unless we check in here on a regular basis. I, I can probably find out by calling Andy, when do you have the traffic study? But not everybody can do that. So I just ask you to consider it. Um, another part of the requirements is that you're supposed to have site drawings of the existing and proposed conditions of the structures. And there's been some talk about the structure on the paintball side um, being upgraded or changed. I don't know if it's internal only, external. We ought to see what it's going to look like. I think the board wants to see that. If there are any changes, where will the door be? Where will the windows be? What's it going to look like? Those are all normal things for you at the planning board. Again, that would come in with the plan application normally, but we won't see that and we won't know. So I'm kind of forewarning you, there may be some people coming to the next meeting when it's scheduled and they won't have seen anything because they won't know when to check. So I urge the uh, audience and the abutters as, uh, to check before the next hearing. 
the, the next point is um, among the things that are supposed to be shown in detail are any structures. And your definition of structures are fences. We've heard a reference to a snow fence, but we don't know what it's going to look like, how it's going to be installed. Is it permanent? Is it temporary? Will it come down in the winter? How often does it get repaired? What are these people who are direct abutters on the backside going to be looking at? This fence is going to surround all of that wetland uh, perimeter. What will it look like? What color will it be? Uh, also, as has been referenced, there's going to be these 10-foot high screens uh, I saw on the plan about where they're going to be located. But we, we've heard some testimony that they'll be at critical areas, and I think that ought to be cemented uh, down and shown on the plan so you all know where it's going to be, what they're going to look like, and the public can see what they're going to be looking at from their backyards or from the roadway. Some of them will be seen from the roadway. Um, the next issue is parking. Your requirements say uh, parking shall be, uh, shall be screened from the right of way. We've heard some testimony that there's natural screening out there. But I can tell you driving by, you can see the barn. That is the existing structure. The parking is going to be in front of it. You will see it. Um, there's no landscape plan submitted that I've found. So I'm, so I'm guessing there's not going to be any landscaping. There are landscaping requirements in your ordinance. I know there's a waiver requested. But think twice about it. This is going to be a paved area in what's a gravel area uh, driving by. This is, you know, this is a critical turning point for this property in this area and this town. It, it's grown. It's not a small farming community. These are not exceptions that are being asked under agricultural, which, by the way, allows temporary structures without planning board approval. They're asking to put up temporary structures, such as a porta potty with your approval. They're not allowed. There's nothing under your ordinances that allow that. I don't know where the authority comes from, but I find nothing in the ordinance that says we're going to have a use of a property which is permitted, and we're going to have up to 100 people, and we want to have a bathroom which is porta potties. Mm -hmm. uh, and part of that is I understand the practicalities. They don't know if it's worth investing the money. Will it be a good venture? But that's not fair or reasonable to everybody else who has to come before you and go through regulations in your mm -hmm. town. The regulations say if you're going to have a use, it's a use. We're going to permit the use, but you have to show us where the bathrooms are going to be, what they're going to be like. What happens if they do a soil test next year and they don't, can't locate it? They can't get a permit to put a septic in. They can't get a permit to put a building in. Springtime comes next year and they still haven't got a building. Are they going to be allowed to operate? What, I, I just, it's not allowed under your ordinance. I don't know how it's in there. What else is not allowed under your ordinance? Uh, they've made a representation that they're going to have temporary parking, overflow parking. That should be marked out. It should be identified. And then the board can decide what kind of surface do you want to have for temporary parking? Do you want to have impervious or pervious? Uh, is it going to take up space which is otherwise designated? That plan designates picnic area. But if that's where the parking is going to be, there won't be much of a picnic area. Uh, the table is going to be there. What are you going to see when you drive by in this overflow parking? Will that be screened adequately? Well, those are all fair questions for the planning board when and if anybody comes in with a non-residential site plan. Uh, talking for a minute about the parking calculations, uh, I've heard testimony that they'll be, uh, they expect 100 max in the first year or so, but it may increase. They have calculated parking based upon 156 users. That's 39 spaces because your ordinance requires one for every four recreational users. They also identify the employees because they have to under your regs, and they identify 12 employees. So if you do some simple math and you take 39 spaces and you detract, uh, subtract 12 employees, you're left with 27 parking spaces. 27 parking spaces, even at the calculations under your ordinance, say the maximum use should be 104. Unless they're willing to stipulate that that's the maximum use on site, they're under parking to begin with. Now, that doesn't even consider the question that was raised by a gentleman just two minutes ago, or I guess five minutes ago. Um, does everybody really arrive four in one car? You know, if you arrive two in one car, you've just doubled the parking demand from what your ordinance requires. If you arrive one in a car, if you get 20 people and they all show up one in a car, you've pretty much filled up half the space. And in this case, you've filled up 20 out of 27 spaces. 
that are designated for customer use. So I think this board has to take a good close look at the parking. Your ordinance sets the minimum requirement, not the maximum. You have a right to overrule that. You have a right to at least require them to have some sort of a plan in place. And I think you can impose a maximum, okay? This is all the parking spaces you have. This is the maximum number of people. You have to shut down after that. That's all you, you're allowed. Um, field marking, let's uh, talk about that. Oh, I guess before I get off, there's no, no landscaping in the parking field, which is a requirement. I can understand that might be a legitimate waiver given the size of this parking field. But think about that. You're just going to be paving a parking lot in an area. Most other people have to have some sort of a plan to show what's going on there, what's going on between the parking field and the building. Is there a walkway? Will it be landscaped? Will the building be landscaped? That's not shown on here. Um, field markings. Uh, they're going to be fields. I think that they should be specifically delineated on the plan. And I think the, the two front ones are pretty well delineated, although there are no dimensions on it. But one could figure them out with a scale. But I think it might be helpful if the applicant would be willing to put stakes out there and allow the neighbors to see just where those fields of play are going to be. Uh, it generally wouldn't uh, disturb people if they saw that they weren't going to be quite as visible as opposed to right next door to their property. But I, I think uh, that would be helpful. I think it would be important to put them on the plan so everybody knows where, how we're going to measure where the field of play is, not just where's any, anywhere out there from 75 feet in is allowed in the field of play. Um, description, as I say, of the picnic area is a little, a little uh, disconcerting. I don't know where the food's coming from. Are people bringing it in? Uh, are they going to be serving it? Will there be a kitchen? Again, all of this could theoretically take place in the first year when all you have is porta potties. You have no, you have no, no provision for. I don't see dumpsters. I don't see trash receptacles shown on site. Um, th those are all pretty normal things. You know, if CVS came in town, you'd be up one side and down the other. Where are you going to put all this? This is going to be 100 people on a busy Saturday by their modest estimates. Could be 150 by their parking estimates. Um, what is the noise impact? And do you think you should have a noise study? Uh, there are going to be 100 shooters going on it there on the first year and maybe more as the years go on. I've been to paintball. I know they're noisy. Unless they're going to have certain kinds of equipment and limit it, you're going to hear the guns and you're going to hear them. Now, is that an impact? Could they mitigate that impact? I don't know the answer to that, but we don't have anything that tells us. But it is something you should consider. Um, that's on the paintball site. I'm just going to roll right into the Mel site. Okay. Um, there, again, we have a site plan which it's hard to, for us to evaluate because we now know they're not going to be doing an addition, so it's going to change the layout of the site. It's going to change what parking is removed or not removed. Mm -hmm. But there was a reference this evening to they're removing a fair number of parking spaces. I'm not sure. I, I don't want to comment where because I don't know. I don't have the plan yet. Mm -hmm. But there's also a proposal of, well, we're going to remove some, but we're going to make room for seven my notes say seven could be constructed if needed. Again, I think that's a planning board decision, and the one thing you don't want to do is say to the applicant, seven spaces uh, if you feel that they're needed. That's, that's a determination that ought to be cemented. You can work with your staff as to how that condition is imposed. But the last thing anybody wants is driving by there, seeing that there's a need for parking, and then having to come back here and beg you to get back interested in the plan. There, that, that should, that's a it's a site which uh, has some very good activity on it, and um, taking away parking rather than adding parking, we think is uh, just counterintuitive to the whole process. As a lady previous to me testified to, you're going to be adding, by their own admission, new types of activities which are going to generate new parking demand. You had adults and sort of juniors, and they might use the golf range while they were there at the go-karts. Now you're adding a whole new element, which we think is good. It's an amusement center. That's what it's going to be. But let's recognize the reality. You're going to be adding a whole new set of customers, you hope. And those customers are going to add more cars. And you're going to add more parking, um, not subtract more parking. So we think that uh, 
that ought to be looked at more carefully. Uh, do you have enough parking? Um, the parking lot, uh, I, I guess I'm going to get to the most uh, troublesome part of this site and the activities on this site. And let's not, you know, pre pretend there's not an elephant in the room here. We have Spooky World. And when Spooky World comes, that site changes. And now we're making changes without considering how Spooky World interacts in it. There has been some testimony that Spooky World won't be parking on the paintball site. And that, if that's true, that should be a condition of the plan. I don't believe that. We now know parking is across the street on that single family home. They park up and down on that street in that vacant lot, which is going to be the paintball site. They park on the house site. That's not shown on any site plan anywhere. If they plan to continue that, they must show where they park. That's part of your regulations. But most importantly, I know this was before the planning board just last year. I've read the minutes. I know that the applicant has worked closely with the police department. But I'm just going to call it to the board's attention. There is nothing in the regulations of your town that allow parking lot use of property in this district. And that's essentially what they're telling you is we have 18 acres. We're not going to tell you where, but we've got about 18 acres we can park cars. Let's, let's get this under control, people. Let's identify the areas. You're probably going to need a variance because it's not a permitted use. Let's show where the parking is going to be. I know that if I was a direct abutter and I woke up one morning and I all of a sudden realized I had a vacant lot, but believe me, six weeks out of the year, they're going to be several hundred cars parked with their lights coming and going until 11 o'clock at night, I would say, did the planning board permit this? I don't think you did, because there's nothing in the record anywhere that says you did. It just says we've got parking elsewhere. Attorney Hollis, I, I don't mean to interrupt you. Um, there are other people who want to speak this evening, and I, I completely understand the issues, that your concerns. I'm just curious. I have one quick question. Where are you and a butter, or your client and a butter on this um, on this property? My client is not a direct to butter to the site. Okay. It is several lots away. Okay. Um, but he is an interested party and uh, speaking as a member of the public. Okay. Um, do you have any other concerns you want to add? Uh, Attorney Perlman, I don't know if you want to uh, um, just quickly address some of this that Attorney Hollis has spoken about or, or not. I, um, we, we know there are going to be more hearings, so. Yeah. Well, that, that may be, but I just want to make sure um, you have an opportunity to address. Um, <coughs> Mr. Chairman, um, not at this time. I will say um, uh, Rick um, and Morgan um, have been very good with us. They've been mm -hmm. calling us for the past say, two weeks, letting us know their concerns. Everything I've heard is, is not a surprise. It's much appreciated uh, on our end. Uh, we will be addressing uh, most of these comments. I have some rebuttal to some of the comments as well, but I would okay. suggest getting through public um, uh, testimony and mm -hmm. we can come back to it. And I believe, Attorney Hulse, you had submitted some comments, I noticed, uh, in the, um, to um, Jens's uh, yes, we did. national region. And I, there were some questions that you were concerned. Uh, do you have anything in writing tonight that you want to submit, or is this basically the ones that you're going to basically? Um, I, I don't have anything in writing because I don't have a plan. Okay. Uh, when I have the final plan, I'll submit something in writing. All right. Because uh, some of my questions... I believe, as Attorney Proman has represented to you, will be addressed in the new plan. And I, yeah. I know the cycle. I do this all the time. Mm -hmm. And there it wasn't enough time to get a plan. So I'm okay. not faulting them. I just think because it's a public hearing, we should raise the issue so everybody is aware of it. Absolutely. Um, okay. And hopefully most of them will be addressed. We appreciate uh, you coming in. Uh, and uh, thank you very much. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, uh, the, only, the only thing that, that again, yeah. the only thing that is a problem is, is the parking. And, you, and the planning board needs to address the traffic on 3A and the people walking around that when Spooky World's going, and you need to do that. And, you know, they even said tonight that they were going to use some overflow parking mm -hmm. in cornfields or the old cornfields, and that's not a permitted use. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Mm -hmm. uh, next person uh, who's interested? Okay. My name is Holly DeMambro, and I live at 24 Robin Ave. I'm going to direct the bottle right about here. Okay. And I did submit something in writing to the board as well. Yes, I have that here. Um, do, do have it. 
Right, so, so I can kind of just summarize a little bit my main concerns. <laughs> and one thing that I think is being significantly overlooked is the noise. Mm -hmm. um, if you've ever played paintball, you know it's not just the guns that make all the noise. It's screaming people. Mm -hmm. And 75 feet is not going to stop us from hearing that. I mean, this is our homes. This is our investment. And we have our children playing in our backyard. Some of the language sometimes that might be heard. Mm -hmm. it's, it's troubling. Okay. The second main issue that I have is the, the barriers. Um, they mentioned 10 foot, 10 foot fences. In the last, last meeting, they mentioned it would be only at certain spots. And that um, I have a hill in my backyard. Are they going to put a fence there? Because if they don't, people will go up the hill. Mm -hmm. It will be an advantage to the people playing paintball, paintball to have the eagle eye view, to aim downwards. So is that going to happen? What's it going to look like? Any kind of a barrier is going to be an eyesore. It's going to lower the property value of our homes. And wetlands is also all obviously a main concern. That was one of the reasons why we bought our property and we never anticipated that someone would put anything on the wetlands. Mm -hmm. So that's something that really needs to be considered. Even though the paintballs are non-toxic, that is introducing a new material to the environment. And has there been any studies done of what that act what the impact of that actually is? If the animals in the environment eat those paintballs, maybe it won't kill them. Maybe mm -hmm. has is has there really been details studied about that? That's also another concern. And those are my main concerns for today. Okay. Does the applicant wish to address some of those concerns at this time or just yeah, finish? Oh, well, well, certainly. Yeah, you have a question. We definitely have to finish public input before the, I would say, the um, uh, the applicant should address any of this. Okay, well, good point. Sure. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Will you be reading the notes submitted by the other neighbors that were unable to attend? Um, I do not have those you Jay have, do, you do have we have three and then a uh, few more well, I don't have, have a hard copy two have come in in favor of and did they come in today or at like five o'clock oh, okay. I forwarded them to you all right via email. The, one, printed. Yeah, the one thing that I want to mention as well is just to in, insist that you watch that video that I sent you it is mm -hmm. a realistic depiction of what paintball field is like it is very noisy very noisy and it goes without saying that the property values will be dramatically lowered if this is approved. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yes, come forward, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Russ Federico, 49 Robin Ave. I'm not in the butter, mm -hmm. but I've been here for 30 years, and I've seen Spook World grow, and the noise continues to get louder and louder each year. Now they're going to add more to it. I've been seeing paintballs. It's like playing war. The other problem is everything in sight, the dirt, the grass, the dirt, it's all going to be gone. There's not going to be any leaves on the trees for nature. What do you think these paintballs are doing? They're shooting. They're shooting everything. <laughs> Everything's bare. It's like somebody went in there and just torched everything. Have you ever seen the kids in the playground walk on the grass and they all walk on the same spot? Well, now you've got all these people scattering, just running. Remember, they're playing war. This is a war game. Yelling and screaming. And I hate to say it, but there's a lot of swearing going on. And you know those potter parties? These guys are out there peeing in the woods. Period. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak? Yes, come forward. My name is Nick Ruffer. I'm a reporter. Could you, could you name and address? Your address and from Five Nick Colby Road. Name? Nick Rutherford. Thanks. So earlier they said there's hill on both sides. Well, I walk out here all the time with my dog. There's hills on this side, which is on Roblin, and hill right across from Mel's Funway. Back here, this lady, she doesn't have a hill on her side. So <clears throat> my concern is the fence and this netting. How much am I going to see, you know, 
and they say they can go 80 to 100 feet, well, if everybody knows if you aim up, it's going to go further. It can go over that. And like the guy that just came up said, everything gets destroyed. Well, if anybody here has been to a paintball field, there's paint everywhere. It, the trees are covered. Everything's covered. It, it just looks like graffiti everywhere. I really don't want to be seeing that from my house that I built a couple of years ago, set way off the road, so I had a nice peace and quiet. Mm -hmm. That's another thing, the noise. It's very, very noisy. Along with, so I believe the cannon for Spooky World is, on, you know, right over here, right? Yeah. Which is, yeah. goes off till one in the morning. <laughs> I, I, you know, it was loud, but I just moved there. I didn't have an issue. Well, now I have a newborn. You know, is that going to be waking him up every, you know, I don't know how cl if I'm the closest one. My other neighbor who's not here, he's closer than me. I know he hears it. Um, I guess that's really it. I mean, it's just going to be, it's going to look like graffiti out there all the time. And like the guy that just was up here, it's, it does get destroyed. I've been to multiple places of Mass, New Hampshire, everywhere. And it's just... It's noisy. It's not very pleasant to look at. So I would be concerned to see where that net is actually going to be, and uh, you know how you guys say a 75 foot buffer, and then you say the ball goes 80 to 100 feet. So what's what's that do? And if I'm out there with my dog, if he eats it, what's going to happen? Is it okay? I mean, I wouldn't think it's okay to eat, but I don't know. That's it. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Sure. Anybody else? Yes, no? Mm -hmm. Okay. I do, I do have one. Yeah, go ahead. Come up, uh, your, uh, give us your name and uh, address, please. I'm Carol McNutt. I live at 442 Charles Bancroft. Mm -hmm. Do any of you live in this field? Where do you live? I live at Mel's. You live at Mel's. Yep. But your that's your income. Yes. We pay a ton of taxes. And we listen to a lot of noise. And I am a working we all work. We don't want people to listen to that on a Saturday or a Sunday. I do not want to. If this happens, I will have to sell my house. Because I cannot put up with that. We moved to Lichfield for a nice community. Not a circus. Well, thank you very much. Anybody else wish to speak tonight? Okay. All right. Well, for purposes of this hearing this evening, um, Jay, is there anything that you would like to add? Um, oh. Uh, we, 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 would you like to read the letters? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Three hard copy and just to uh, three or four more. Okay, hold on. <laughs> One from Holly DeMambro. Where's the? Uh, okay, you have Danielle, Danielle Riley. Open the top. 7:44 p.m. See. Mm. I'm not seeing that. Well, it would say. Let's see. Do you have hard copies there? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Clark at Robbins. Say my name on the top, so I just said. How many did you just get from me? Hold on. Does anyone, does anyone on the site, does anyone have 
it's not on the site. I'm sorry. I emailed the patient. Oh. Email. Oh. Oh. Okay. Thank you. I got nothing to do with my inbox. Just him. Okay. All right. All right, that's that one. I'll let him read the three hard copies while you're putting them out. Pass me the hard copies. No, no, no. I can read them into the record. Where's yeah, you can where, read. The, I don't have a hard copy. I don't have a hard copy. Yeah, I, well, they're, they're on the yeah. that, that, That's why I asked. Where where's the hard, hard copies? copies? Pass them so down. I will read them. It's on the site. That's <laughs> okay, we have hard copies. Good. Good. Those three and then like five more. Right. The first one uh, is a paintball park application objection that was submitted March 20th, 2018. Um, this is Holly DeMambro. Um, uh, to Litchfield Planning Board from Rhonda Cavers to Litchfield Planning Board. Uh, paintball Park Application Objection. That's the subject line. Uh, thank you for listening to my opinion. Year after year, my neighbors and myself discuss the dread of Halloween and the noise and traffic accompanying. I won't address the traffic as the officers do a pretty good job controlling the issue on Charles Bancroft Highway and it is only rarely trickles through the neighborhood. The noise, on the other hand, is unbearable. Each year, it seems the duration of days and the hours into the evening increase along with the noise decibel. Our pets hide in our basements, we close all our windows, and still live in disturbance. We are unable to enjoy deck time due to the blood-curdling screeches coming from music and the crowd night after night. Please hear our plea. Please don't allow another area of Mel's to develop that will cause the same disturbance, but for a longer duration. I appreciate the business and the fun provided for our town and surrounding town patrons, but there doesn't seem to be any level of respect for noise control for our neighborhood already. Please don't encourage this problem. Pro please don't encourage this problem's growth. Thank you again for hearing my opinion. Rhonda Cavers, Four Oak Drive, Litchfield, New Hampshire. Justin Croto, no relation to me, uh, to the planning, uh, Litchfield Planning Board, um, to whom it may concern. I own a home on Sybil Lane right off of Robin Ave. We already deal with the noise from the shooting range that you can hear all summer. We and most that move to Litchfield live here for the quiet and the beauty of this town. Adding a paintball center in a residential neighborhood would not only decrease property value, it would also put property at risk for damage from kids that are heading to and leaving the paintball center. I can see it now, thinking it's funny as they are driving away to shoot a few paintballs at a home or vehicle. Please do not approve this and allow us to enjoy our backyards, not having to listen to nonstop paintballs, firing and people screaming and yelling. Thank you, Justin Croto, 6 Civil Lane. From Wayne Laverdier. Oh, that's you. Okay. Um, application for Paintball Park uh, to members of the board. We want to express our sincere concern regarding an application for a paintball park in our neighborhood by Mel's Fun Park. We live at 2 Sybil Lane, Litchfield, New Hampshire, and I'm basically right across from this lot. We moved here two years ago because of the quiet location and great neighborhood to raise our kids. We love the town and love the neighborhood. We do give up the quietness every fall for the fun park spooky world festivities. And we understood that when we move here, we understood that when we moved here, excuse me. The noise is unpleasant, but we can handle this for six weeks a year. We currently have a beautiful wooded area going up Robin Ave with lots of wildlife crossing between the lot in question and our property on a daily base basis. It's very quiet and peaceful. A paintball park being approved would be a different story altogether. There would be a large net put up for safety, I'm assuming, which is an eyesore. I have been at the back properties of other paintball parks and you can see it coming from a long walk away. 
The noise from kids screaming from being shot or almost shot along with the paintball guns going off would be heard constantly. It would change the whole neighborhood from Route 3A up Robin, down Oak Street, and surrounding neighborhoods from a nice family neighborhood to living next to an amusement park. I am putting my vote in to strongly oppose the approval of this application for the sake of our town and our neighborhood. I found out about this application two days ago and tried to get out of work for Tuesday evening to attend the meeting, but was unable to on such a short notice. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Sincerely, Wayne Laverdier. Okay. Is, is there any more? Mm. Yeah. Daniel Wiley. Oh, Daniel Riley? Okay, yeah, I got it. Uh, from Daniel Riley to the Litchfield Planning Board, subject paintball park on Robin. Good evening. I was just advised of the proposed paintball park on Robin Ave. My fiance and I bought our house on Sybil in August, in August 1.5 acres secluded, just what we wanted or searched eight months for. Peaceful, perfect yard, everything we were looking for to raise a family in an awesome town for on a quiet street. We endeavored our first spooky world fall, cannons slash traffic slash uh, mass paranoia and shrugged it off as it was only a couple of months. We are ecstatic for the cornfields to grow back in to block off the 3A noise and finally, after a summer full of house Reno's last year, be able to actually enjoy our yard, barbecue, and relax. I am confident this proposal will place a significant burden on our quality of life. I was unable to attend the meeting tonight. Please consider this email my written disapproval of the proposed paintball park. Regards, Sybil Lane resident. Then I think the last one is Samantha Radcliffe. I'm at 646. Tonight. Okay. From Samantha Radcliffe uh, to planning board to town of Litchfield, attaches a letter should be taken into consideration for tonight's meeting in regards to Mel's Funway Park, expanding their business. Thank you. Let me just open the attachment. Excuse me. Oh, there's one more. Town of Litchfield. Mel's Funway Park has always been a part of our family from being a first job for my brothers and me to a summer job for my mother who teaches during the school year. Mel's and Nightmare New England have and always will put a smile on anyone's face right when you step foot in the batting cages, hear the reviving of the go-karts, or even after getting spooked by an actor in one of their uh, many haunts during the fall season. Something that Mel's and Nightmare New England has always benefited from is their hard work, hardworking team, or should I say family, who work day in and day out to make sure their business is successful and continues to put smiles on all of our faces. Their plan to expand the park is a necessity for our continuous smiles. I truly believe what they are doing is something that the town of Litchfield has always needed a family-oriented place to go to relax, have fun, and always laugh during whatever you decide to do. When they expand the park, it will show our town and guests visiting from out of town how much time, effort, and care the family at Mel's puts into making sure all of us are happy and always showing up and leaving with a smile. Please strongly consider this great opportunity that Mel's Funway Park, Nightmare New England, and the town of Litchfield will greatly benefit from. Sincerely, Samantha Radcliffe. There's one more. Um, okay. It's 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 uh, came in under Holly, but it's from Stacy and Kelly Smith. Came in at uh, six twenty-two. Six forty-two. Next one after uh, Samantha. Um. It's titled. Uh, Work versus planning department? Value no, plan? no. no. Oh, right above that. 
Did you write about from Holly Demambro? Yeah. Yeah, I have that letter here. But that's Stacy and Kelly Smith. It's oh, I, I see. Oh, okay. I get it. Got it. All right. From Stacy Smith to Holly to Holly Demambro. Subject: Paintball Park at Mel's. Members of the board, we are writing you to express our concern regarding requested approval of a paintball park in our neighborhood by Mel's Fun Park. We live at Four Sibyl Lane, Litchfield, New Hampshire, two houses away from this lot. As residents in this home for 11 years, we have experienced the growth of Mel's as they introduced and expanded Nightmare New England slash Spooky World and consider ourselves very tolerant of the noise, traffic, inconvenience that it brings every year. We understand their desire to introduce new activities and attract new business. However, while we don't outright oppose the paintball park entirely, our, we request consideration for the portion of their property that it will occupy and its potential impact on neighbors from noise, construction of fences, etc. We don't want to be able to see it or hear it from our home and hope that Mel's will be respectful of these considerations and concerns expressed by all impacted abutters. If, Mel, if Mel's proposal addresses these concerns adequ adequately, we thank them for being a good neighbor. Otherwise, we are putting our vote in to strongly oppose the approval of this application for the sake of our town and our neighborhood. Thank you, Stacy and Kelly Smith, for Sybil Lane, Litchfield, New Hampshire. Is that anybody? Okay. Is there anybody else who wishes to speak tonight? Okay. Well, Attorney Perlman, You've heard from the abutters. We've heard from you this evening. Um, it sounds like there's a lot of work to be done. Mr. Chairman, uh, for the record, I'm um, Andy Perlman again for the applicant. Um, I'm not gonna address all the concerns tonight. We have uh, another set of plans to um, mm -hmm. update. Again, with Jen, Jen's um, comments, uh, we'll address much of what we heard. I will, I, I do have, um, uh, two comments, and then I would suggest a uh, continuance to a date certain. Uh, we will do our absolute best to address all these concerns, although I do caution folks, we're not going to be able to address uh, all, all of everyone's concerns uh, with the application. Um, there is simply an inherent conflict between a residential neighborhood and a, and a commercial district. That's what we have. We're, we're, we're an allowed use in a commercial um, zone. And there's always going to be, no matter how big a buffer you're, you're going to have, there's always going to be um, a conflict. For example, you folks know I lived in town for many, many years. I lived in the southeast corner of town. Um, I could hear the Hudson Speedway. I, I happen to like the sound of speedways, but it, it annoyed others. There's someone, owns a, someone owns a quarry over in Londonderry, and there was an earthquake uh, midday every day. It was loud, and it would shake my house off its uh, foundation. Um, it just goes with the territory. It was a, they were permitted commercial use. I'm in a residential district a mile away. It, it's, 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 it's part of the uh, living in a community. Um, as to comments from uh, Mr. Charbonneau and Attorney Hollis, again, we are grateful to them for uh, giving us a heads up. Uh, there's nothing worse than being surprised at a hearing, and we've been talking with Rick and Morgan over the past uh, two weeks or so. Um, I will say that uh, we have been before you in 2015. We did the Colby subdivision and the Haunted Hayride. Uh, in 2017, we did the pavilions. Uh, T.F. Moran was a project engineer. Um, if we're out of compliance with anything, uh, that's news to us. Um, and so if we have any issues, we'd be happy to work through them um, with uh, Kevin Lynch or whomever it may be. So, but um, we, we've done everything asked of us as we've permitted um, everything on the site. Um, Mr. Chairman, given the um, comments from Jen, what we heard tonight, um, our engineering team is gonna need some time. So my suggestion to the board mm -hmm. um, is to uh, continue this a month out. Originally, I, was, I thought we could move this on a two-week cycle. We, we just have 
too much work to do uh, between uh, now and when we can get plans done. Um, talking with Jen Siz this afternoon, she said, please, you know, get us plans ahead of time so we have an ample time to review. Um, so if the board would so be so willing, um, I believe it would be the 17th. 17th, okay. All right. All right. Well, it sounds like there, um, obviously, on, on your end, there's going to be some work that needs to be done. Um, 17th is perfectly fine if you feel that you can get all the information that you need at that time. Um, we can continue this. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, Jay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, certainly, it's, it's the board's prerogative to continue it to a date certain, if that's your pleasure. Yeah. Uh, I just expressed some concern. Okay, go ahead. Given the extent of the changes to the plants mm -hmm. that are proposed, uh, that this is going to the Conservation Commission, I'm assuming that certainly at least they will be conducting a site walk. Uh, there's a traffic study that's going to be coming in. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think just in deference to the concern that we're seeing uh, from abutters in the communities that people have ample opportunity to review the plants mm -hmm. uh, before they come in. So that would, it would suggest to me that it might be more appropriate Oh, again, I would leave it to the discussion of the board um, to continue it, but not to a date certain, so that w when uh, we know that the plans are in, that the materials are in, that we've had adequate time to review them, it could be re-noticed, and I think then the uh, abutters and all other interested parties would then obviously know uh, that they have the opportunity to come and review these materials beforehand. Uh, I wouldn't want people to you know, have their first opportunity to see the revised plans uh, at another hearing uh, that would probably be less than productive. Okay. Does that, I mean, Attorney Perlman, how do you feel about that? Well, we'll be ready. I mean, I, um, I, again, the, the goal um, when I made the request to get to this hearing and, and then try to work on a two-week cycle was to um, have have, have Mel's open some of these facilities this year, um, and I would suggest um, that the uh, Funway Park site, you know, may take a different track. The paintball may take more time. The Funway Park site, you know, could, could proceed. Um, the 17th, um, so four-week cycle, we're, we're comfortable with that. Um, if there's some hesitation, you do go to the first meeting in May, uh, but we, we do want to uh, keep this keep this moving without having to re-notice, resubmit as if it's a whole new application. Okay. What does the board feel? I'm just uh, you, you know, feel free to put input, but I mean, um, because of the 60 drive day clock, Jay. I mean, in terms of um, them submitting plans, but what about the first of May? Would that yeah. give you folks enough time? Uh, Assuming that the materials were received in time. Right. Yes. And, and I think a condition of that would be, Attorney Coleman, is that make sure that a week before that um, hearing on the 1st, which would be the 24th of April, that all pl the, the uh, plans would be submitted to the NRPC and to Joan, uh, hard copies particularly. Um, they would need those by then. Absolutely. So that would yes. be the you know absolute deadline to to get all that in if you're looking. That that works for us. Okay. Does that work for an RPC, Joan? No. Good. Okay. I think the conservation will be uh, asking for a site walk. Okay. Sometime after March 30th. Okay. May I ask a question? Yeah, this is about this <coughs> this one here. It says the planning board may apply to the selectman for an extension not to exceed an additional 90 days. Well, that's if, um, yeah, if it goes outside. Right, the, so the we're trying to work with the date. Right, right. We, we could go to the board if of selectmen and get another 90 days. If something does happen in the interim and we need to do that, then we can definitely address that issue. Um, you, you, certainly, you know, Mr. We Chairman, need an extension. You won't have to do that. We'll, you'll get an extension from us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, things happen, Attorney Perlman, so <laughs> I understand. Uh, but just, just procedure. Yeah. I know well, you'll be ready. We need to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what I, you know, the, the public hearing is going to be remain open. Um, so, um, you know, 
this whole uh, the uh, the site plan itself and um, what you heard tonight, um, everything is going to be um, remain open. Um, what we need to do now is to make a motion to continue the hearing, not to a date certain, but to continue the hearing. Well, I thought we wanted to do it to a date certain. Yeah. You want to do to the to the first? Was it yeah. first? Of well, May? Jay said that. No. Well. I think uh, maybe I got confused. I thought you said you didn't want to do a date certain. Originally, you know, originally, originally, that yeah. was my preference. I, I yeah, think no, May I, first. I, I, Mr. I thought Chairman, would give us adequate time, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yeah, just. I make a motion to continue to the first of May, um, on the condition that um, plans are submitted to the NRPC and to Joan a week ahead of time. Okay. But you have to. You have to. Continue to a date certain for the abutter. Date and time certain. Uh, <laughs> at the first of May, twenty eighteen. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's Tuesday. <laughs> that's that would be Tuesday, May first. May first at seven p.m. At 7 p.m. Here in Litchfield Town. Right. So. Good. And yeah, that's the. Mo I have a motion on the table. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have discussion? Discussion. Go ahead. Did you want the traffic study to come in also as part of that? And maybe a site walk? Well, yeah. It, Was that all? It, I, but he didn't say If that. they bring this in, it's going to have to be okay. substantially I complete. I mean, it's, I mean they're going to have to have everything that they... But the site walk, too. Didn't they want that in there as well? The site walk, yeah, can be, you know, obviously, um, if you... Does the board... Actually, I should ask. Does the board wish to have a site walk? Do they want to look at the property? Do you want to schedule a date um, to do that? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. I, I have no, you know, I have no objection to doing that. Um, the motion is still on the table, though. Right. So. Um, but do we have to include those two things in the motion? That's what I was questioning. You could, but unless you want to, you know, withdraw the motion and then Reset. we can renew it. So do I. I will withdraw the motion if you want to add to it. I think we needed those pieces. All right, all right. I will throw my motion. You okay. Can, right, I will let so you make the motion. <laughs> do I make a motion? But to before we motion? before we even do that, I've already what, my motion. What time do we want to? We don't need time and date. If we're going to do a site plan, when do you want walk. to do it? I'm flexible. Well, we gotta. I want to not do it when there's a blizzard. <laughs> So well, we have snow nor'easters. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. Um, what day thing. works for everybody? What is it? Same with are, are they, they going to be there? Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they have to. We have to work with their right. dates. Yeah. No. <laughs> what What works for you, attorney? Maybe. Grab my calendar. I need you guys. I don't need you guys. I need you guys. <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> Weekend, weekday. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would uh, I would suggest say the 14th of the 21st of April. 14th. Two Saturdays. How much snow is out there right now? 14th of April. The 24th of April. Yeah. All right. 14th. The 14th or the 21st of oh, April. 21st. Yeah. And um, okay, 14th preferably. Um, okay. and Mr. Chairman, this is this is one of those you know things that you're not going to get everybody mm -hmm. um, to it, but uh, the 14th oh, certainly understand. works for us. Okay. Does this work for the board? What time? Time. On the 14th. What time? I was just 9 a.m. So the 14th of April, which is a Saturday. Mm -hmm. At 9 a.m. on the site at Mel's. I'm just checking. Quick. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. I came up with the government one, not mine. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps Concom can uh, have it at the same time. I would suggest we meet at the Laserplex okay. parking lot. The Laserplex parking lot. Thank you. 
9 a.m. 9 a.m. 14th. April. Saturday, April 14th. Just to get a look at the place. And I, I hope that's okay. It works for me. Does it work with you? Yep. Okay. Everybody good? Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll schedule it for Saturday, April 14th at 9 a.m. at the Laserplex parking lot. Now, if you want to make a motion <laughs> that... I'm not even... I don't even remember what was going in my motion now. Um, you just need to move it to continue to the date certain. You don't need to put yeah, the conditions in it. Okay. Beautiful. You know what? <laughs> Let's... I make, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to continue to, <laughs> to the meeting to May... First at 7 p.m. Tuesday, May 1st, 7 p.m. You're in town hall. You're in town hall. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Oh. I have a question. Okay. Oh, well, we have a motion. We have a motion on the table. Yeah, we do have a motion on the table. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Who's well, I, I asked who I asked for a second. Second okay. for Tyler. Okay. There's a motion and a second. Do I have discussion? Okay. All, all those in favor of uh, moving this hearing to a date and time certain, May 1st, 2018, 7 p.m. Town Hall, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstain? Motion passes 500. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So we will obviously see you back here May, on May 1st. Um, and we'll see them on April as well. Well, we will see you at the site walk, obviously. Yeah, at the site walk. And the folks here tonight, the members of the uh, um, community public, um, are basically notified that that is going to take place uh, April 14th, 9 a.m. at the Laserplex parking lot. It is open public. So if you want to come, you're welcome to be there, 9 a.m. Um, there was a question. Yes, oh, yes. I, I did see that. that yes, ma'am, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was my question going back to would a butters be allowed to go on the side? Yes, absolutely. It's a public, yes. Yep. You would, Same thing you as would, this. Yes. Thank you. So, yeah. That's not quite true. Right. Well, it's, that's up to them to say yes. Yeah, that they own the property. Well, I mean, did they sign, uh, Attorney Perlman, did they sign anything that says, uh, usually there's in the says, application, it says the that you consent to the board's, it's the board yeah, it's the consultants can but <laughs> oh, the abutters, that's a good point. It doesn't say abutters, it says well, planning board, planning board consultants. Consultants. And consultants, okay. It's up to their liability. So, well, are you yes, comfortable I mean, with that, yes, Attorney Perlman? Yes, <laughs> okay. yes, yes, yes. All right. Yes. All right. And we are going to prohibit swearing on the, uh, <laughs> on the fields. Okay. Very good. Very good. Thanks, guys. All right. The hearing is continued. Um, thank you all for coming. Thank you for expressing your concerns tonight. Thank you. And uh, be safe. The snow's coming. Oh, no way. And northern north. It's not morning. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yes. I think he did a short stint in summer at NRPC. Okay. Ooh, that was Russ. Welcome to the school planning board. <laughs> Poor Jay. <laughs> Yeah, you're sitting away back there all the time. Kind of fear there's a voice activated. They're all like this. No. Everyone. Everyone you're going to be part of. He's She'll joking. Come back. Go on. You've seen them. They're pretty quiet. Oh, right. No, that's right. Nobody's like, what's going on? Poor Kate. And thank God you showed up tonight. I probably would have taken a swan dive off the roof. <laughs> I would have got through it, but not with in front of Jay of all people. Jen's boss, right? Now. All right, so. <laughs>
Bruce. Sorry about that. If I, I'm still learning the procedure. Of, you know, it's all good. Did we do a motion? We wrote, you know. I think I got the other one delayed. Okay. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Let's hear the OKQ now. Yes. Yeah. Have a good night. I'm going to shut this off now. <laughs> See my new phone? So, Ooh. Today, the new one's coming after, like, with this amount of snow, probably a little bit after. Anyway. So I got an S8 plus. Oh. Oh, we just have one more internal thing. Yeah, we got to uh, do so I, I well, she said that we'll committee reports. Um, I think it's wrong. And our will probably have something to say. I think they sent out a letter I was planning to recently about doing something. And then Limerlock always has something to say. So that'll be about, it. Um, just, just in general, just us. The community reports are just information. The community reports are just We'll see what happens. Which meeting are you at? You mean tomorrow night? Tomorrow tomorrow evening. Evening. I have a con con meeting. Are we going again together? <laughs> you want to go together again? Yeah. It doesn't matter. Weeks. See if they have it. I don't know if they did a cancel, but. The yeah. um, did they cancel it? Yeah. They actually canceled the meeting? All right, I'm going to um, continue the hearing. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> i got to finish things meeting. off here. Um, well, this is not a pen. Oh, it's a pen. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, Joan, the bond release on Pine Creek Ashwood development was signing. That one we're not going to be. I went up to Pine Creek today because Lou had said he couldn't see the um, sinkhole that was out there with the snow. So I went up there today, and sure enough, there is a sinkhole about this big, but that needs to be fixed before they release the bond. Okay. okay. That's awesome. So that's going to that's gonna be put off. <laughs> Um, committee reports. Are there any reports from the committee? Um, obviously, the NRPC is meeting tomorrow night um, at the National Regional Planning Commission offices in Merrimack. Is that a commissioner meeting? Or is that I think it's, it's a commissioner full, meeting. Full commission, yes. yes. Yeah. Um, and there's also, I believe, there's a, an event on Thursday, the 29th. Something yes. uh, the NRPC is hosting an event um, at the uh, in Nashua. Right, it's the yeah. uh, annual forum. Annual forum, yes. I got a letter about that. I have been to that. It's it's very good if you're you know interested in going. I might be going to that as well. So you may see me there. <laughs> um, the Conservation Commission does meet tomorrow tentatively at. No, no, March 28th. Oh, I'm sorry, March 28th. Uh, the Conservation Commission does not meet tomorrow. But it's March 28th. 7 p.m. Town Hall. Um, approval of the February 20th and March 6th minutes. Do we have any minutes? Yeah, they're on the site. They're on the site. Did anybody have a chance to look at the minutes? I have looked at the minutes. Yes. Okay. Do you want to take a minute to look at them and just breeze through them for a quick second? Make sure everything's okay? Um, I'm dead. My He's dead. Okay. Do we have hard copies, John? Uh, John? Sorry. No. Did you, you didn't plug in? Did your battery run out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is um, February twentieth, and you can you can move your hand. Like that. <coughs> Joe, could I ask publicly that you could ask Russ about getting these meetings posted onto the website? I don't know if there's a conversion process. I can ask him. I'll ask, I'll see what's what's really up with it. Yeah. TV. Yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah, and I think Tom Young used to try to push for that. I'm understanding. Yep. I'll see what we can do about it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and I think these, the, the, the next ones, those are the ones from last time. Those extra trays up there. Okay. If there's no other questions for the minutes, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the minutes. 
Okay. Uh, they, well, yeah, there's two uh, sets. Oh, yeah. So you're going to approve them both? Or? Can I approve both the sets? Mr. Chairman, I make a, <laughs> a motion to approve both sets of minutes. For February 20th and March um, Six. 6th. Yes, as stated. As stated. All right, I have a um, motion on the table. Do I have a second? Second. Do I have a discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstained. Motion passes five zero zero. Any other business? Joan, do we have any other business? Mm -hmm. Oh, Jay. Just one reminder, I was supposed to give you the twenty seventh Recreation Commission meeting on Darapont. Oh yes, that's oh, right. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me because I completely after tonight <laughs> 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 slipped my mind. Yes, we do have a meeting with the Rec Commission next Tuesday night. Yep. Um, is anybody besides myself going to be attending that meeting or would like to attend that meeting? I may what day is that on? Okay. I uh, thought it was our meeting yes. and they were coming to Is that here? Us. It's going to be here no. in town hall. Yeah, yeah. we're going to them. And, um, Let me check that day. It's in our calendar. You. What's it's, that? It's on the town calendar where it is, as a meeting. What day is it though? Right. Is it Tuesday? That's, uh, Tuesday. Yeah, it's Tuesday. Tuesday. Next yeah. Tuesday? Yeah. yeah. What was the time? It's uh, 7 p.m. So. Just like these meetings. Okay, all right. So um, then I'll g meet you guys here for 7 o'clock, March 27th. We'll have a meeting with the Rec Commission concerning the, um, the design, the chapter, the de conceptual design chapter yeah. and Dara Pond. So, Should and, be fun. Uh, we did get a letter confirming that we, they will be, we will be on the agenda for that meeting by the Rec Commission. The board is actually fun. Okay. <laughs> any, any other business? If not, I want to thank our esteemed planner for being with us this evening. Uh, Jay, uh, did a great job. And uh, tell Jen that uh, we, uh, we uh, thank her for all her input and, and work, hard work. <laughs> and of course, your hard work uh, at NRPC. And thank you. Um, with that said, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> <laughs> Discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstained. Motion passes 5 0 0. Thank you, everyone uh, out there in TV land, for joining us this evening. And um, we'll see you here on May 1st. And, um, and be careful out there tomorrow. I guess it's going to snow again. We're going to get another Northeaster. So enjoy the snow. Enjoy the spring. <laughs>